curling, the most exciting curling game going on in the United States right now. Follow, uh, we are here at draw 10 of the Raymond Kaiser Memorial Bonspiel for a B event semifinal. Both of these games on the ice tonight will be B event semifinals, win or go home games. Our feature match on sheet B will be Team Fallon representing the Potomac Curling Club. They'll be throwing the yellow stones. Jimmy Fallon is the skip, Emily English is the vice. I'm gonna botch this. Uh, Gian Grosby is the second and Hillary Sparks is the lead. I apologize uh, if he has any family listening. I have no idea how to pronounce that name. Uh, on the red stones uh, from the Rochester Curling Club, Team Barajas, skipped by Chris Barajas, vice Erica Schmidt-Schubart, Second is Andrew Schubart, and the lead is Ashley Topley. The other game going on during this draw, there are only two games, is going to be on sheet A. It is the other B event semifinal. It is Team English from Potomac against Never Blame the Ice Maker, who never remember the Ice Man rather, who is from Bucks County over on sheet A. So we're getting ready to get our first stone here. My name is Alan McNeil. I'll be commentating through this whole thing. Also operating the scoreboard and co-commentating is Michael Sells. Yes, hello, here I am. Switching the cameras and doing things. So the first stone from Chris Baraja, I'm sorry, from Chris Barajas' lead, Ashley Topley, is on its way. He called for it to be in the house. And it has gone into the top four foot. Put it in over here. Please don't. Oh. All right. Hillary Sparks first stones coming up. Uh, Jimmy Fallon asked for it to be a uh, a guard, and it is, looks like it's going to be a guard round about just barely over the hog. But it is over the hog, which is all that truthfully matters. So all is good. Ashley Topley being asked to provide a guard for a stone that's in the forefoot. Stone is on its way. Looks like it's going to overcurl a little bit to be a perfect guard, but it is going to block. Eh, it blocks about 85% of the stone, sitting here in the three depth. So, Jimmy Fallon asking for Hillary with her second stone. He's asking for it to chip it. I don't know if I don't know if he's got enough to see it, but he's gonna try. Well, yep, yep. Okay. Yeah, hard. Don't Sweepers are on it fairly hard. Looks like it's gonna come in. I don't know. Nope, she's chipping. She's peeling the top guard. Both stones end up in the guard zone, and but not a free guard violation. No, yeah, not a not a bad tick no, for actually, Plan B nice, on the trip. Nice yeah. tick separation. So that stone, the red stone that is currently shot, is now exposed. So Brahas second, Andrew Schubert being asked to put it back. So he's asked to put the guard back. It is over curling. So whereas before it was only 90% yeah, covered, now it's about 40% yeah, covered. So Jimmy Fallon asking uh, his second Gian to take it out. 40% actually might even be a bit generous from the camera angle here. I, have. I, I am slightly off center line, so it's hard to come. However, it is guarded it's just guarded enough, enough that yeah, because Gian bashes his stone into it. The guard goes, actually the guard does not leave the house. The guard is hanging on the back 12 foot. So actually right now Barajas lies two 
and the yellow shooter ended up actually providing a guard. So that shot did not accomplish any of the goals. Andrew Schubert being asked to draw in behind that other yellow guard off on the right of the center line. Uh, feels to me as though this might be a little tight. Sweepers are trying to hold it, but I don't think he's going to get past. Yeah, I didn't have the distance either. And even if he had the distance, he wouldn't get past the guard. That's a hog stone. So we now are on Gian's second stone. which I believe Jimmy's asking him to come in behind the cover. Either freeze on that red or tick that red out. Either way is acceptable to him, I'm sure. Sweepers are working it hard. I think this line also was pulled a little tight. Yep, and the guards have been split. And just so you know, those of you who have been following all this time, we usually try to have uh, skips on mics, but on this particular game, we actually don't. Both skips declined to wear the microphones, as is their rights. That's that's perfectly yeah. within their rights. Uh, we do have some ambient mics in the shed, so we might catch some of the conversation, but probably not as much as we normally would. Um, and also, you might notice, the if, you, if you hear background noise, it might be a little bit louder, because, well, it's the Saturday night drop. Um, four teams on the ice, 19 teams in the warm room, just saying. Uh, all right, uh, Erica Smith Schubert throwing her first stone. She was asked to draw around from the right side to the left, getting in behind. I think she's leaving it a little light. All the stones over on this side seem to be coming up a little bit light. So that's a guard on that turn. wasn't wasn't what was asked for, but she'll take it. Um, Emily English being asked to take the out turn, take the take out from the out turn. Interesting choice. Yeah, I guess that is the way the, the port goes, um, but it still just feels, because of where the stone is, it feels like yeah. it's more natural to play the in turn. But. Yeah, just feels like if she misses the guard with that turn, she's gonna miss the stone. She actually doesn't miss the guard, she tips the guard. Now, side benefit, Port is now wide open. So, you know, there is that. Yeah, the front, all sorts of covered from all different angles. Uh, the middle, not covered, though, which is where the yeah, stone in the house is exactly. right now. Exactly. Although it appears that Chris Barajas is asking Erica Smith Schubert to fix that. that seems reasonable. <laughs> yeah. With a just to the left of center guard, he'd be perfectly happy with a two weight guard. Pretty much putting it yeah, about, as, about as deep as the doubles mark would probably be ideal. Erica Smith Schubert's stone is on the way. And it looks like it's going to be a solid like guard right there. that hole. Yeah, that's, that's basically exactly what the doctor ordered. So now Jimmy Fallon is going to be asking Emily English with her last stone to do something. He hasn't decided to do Peel slash run back. I'm sure he would prefer the run back, but Peel would be okay. Emily's stone is on its way down the ice. Feels like it's a little wide. It is a little wide. It's a lot wide. Uh, at this point, we're going to be having to play it through via raise. Raise of one of Jimmy's other stones. It might work, though. The other stone has been raised. Nope, straight through. Straight through. Didn't have, the, didn't have enough angle. And so didn't really change the situation at all. So Chris Barajas looking at his options. Currently sitting two. He's got the only two stones in the house. Uh, Jimmy Fallon does have two guards over on the extreme left that could probably be brought into the house without too much trouble if necessary. The right side of the sheet is pretty well guarded up. So looks like he's calling for the wide guard, or is he just calling to just shut up every shut off everything with his with a, with a 
or he's either going for the right, yeah, he's going for the wide draw. I'm not even drinking and I'm stuttering my words. He's going for the wide draw into the house. I'm sure he'd be happy with coming up short as a guard too. Not happy, but at least he'd be content with it. So this is the first skip straw, Chris Barajas. Now, previous draws on this sheet was a little slow and not very swingy over here. It was very straight. He, he gave it a lot of broom, expecting a traditional three or four feet of curl. Doesn't look like he's getting it. Doesn't look like he's getting to the house either. So he has put up a very high guard, which admittedly shuts off the draw line for Jimmy Fallon. But I don't think Jimmy Fallon was playing the draw in the first place. So. Jimmy Fallon taking some time evaluating his options. He's got lots of them. I don't know that he likes any of them, but he's got lots of them. They're also throwing skip stones over on sheet A. Uh, Andy Inglis throwing his first skip stone currently. So we will, of course, keep you updated on that game as scores one. And you can actually see it in the, uh, in the wide shot. That game is Ingles versus Never Blame the Ice Maker. Okay, Jimmy Fallon in, he's playing an in out, in off, trying to get a roll Just off of line. his, one of his red, yellow guards that we were talking Take about, and line. either Take promote that in, or roll the shooter in off of it, either way. Looks like it's gonna be, the, if anything, it's gonna be the promote, and in that case, all it does is it rolls, well, okay, so it's definitely second now, so it's definitely a successful cut down. It's the second shot. But it is not. The, it is definitely not the uh, shot stop. So Chris Barajas looking to figure out what to do with his last stone at the end. I was going to say that I'm not sure that it's definitely second, but now the vice is standing on top of the other red stone, so I can't really. I'm pretty confident. It looks like yellow is about a third on the rings and red's about a quarter. But as we have said repeatedly through the day. There is a little bit of uh, camera deception on these cameras, so. Yeah, they're a little fish-eyed, and they're not directly over the pins. Right. And so so you might be able to see under a stone a bit and think it's out of the house when it's in, and vice yeah. versa. So it's possible that it's closer than it looks to me. We'll know for sure if the uh, vices say something differently than what we see. So he's going way to the outside here, looking to kind of corner promote his stone in, I believe. But actually, that's going to end up being wide, and it's going to hit Fallon stone. Is it going to give it enough to put it in the? OK, now there's no question. Now that stone is yeah. definitely second shot, thereby eliminating all, all semblance of doubt. You know, actually, he did, the, he did that deliberately. Because he took that, because now that stone stone's not available for a raised takeout. Right. So I think I think that was a deliberate decision to, to play that shot. Yeah, and making it second doesn't hurt doesn't him at hurt all anything. because he's still yeah. shot, right? Exactly. So Fallon looking to, he has to play a raise promote on, he's got a stone. He's got the one he, when he was, the shooter he threw last time, because it wrecked kind of high there, it now has some angle to get to the shot stone as opposed to the the last one where he kind of had to in off because of how low it was, because this one's higher. Okay, I see it. 
Stone is on the way. It's got a pretty good season. Sweepers get on it immediately. And then they were taken off of it. Now they're just keeping it clean. Now they're on it again. Definitely going to be contact made. Let's see what happens after the collision. Spin it in the right way. It made contact, but it did not quite move it enough. Got 85% of the shot, but he needed 95. So that is a steal of one for Barajas in the first end to go up one nothing. Worth trying. It's a well played shot. It just didn't quite get what he wanted done. Close though, very close. Yeah, not sure you heard Jimmy say over the ambient mics there, worth trying. Uh, not only was it worth trying, I think it was the correct shot to call. Absolutely. It was really his only chance at getting in there, and he would have gotten two because yeah. of the previous shot from the red. Yeah, team. it was 100% so. the right the right decision. It's just, and the execution wasn't bad either. It just yeah, didn't. It's just, it's, he had to it be was perfect, a, yeah. it was just a little was less a, than perfect. It was a really difficult shot. Yes. So, never blame the Iceman is throwing the hammer over on sheet A against what looks like one yellow, but he's got it. He's sticking around. I think that may have gotten him, might may have gotten him three over on sheet A. Chris Barajas lead Ashley Topley throwing a center guard with the first stone. It's just to the right of the center line, left as you're looking on the screen, at about the one and a half depth. Not quite a two, a little deeper than a one. Works either way. Jimmy Fallon down one nothing, asking his lead Hillary Sparks to come around or just put a guard up. Corner guard, no, okay. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna be a slight split on the guards. We now have two two high guards, one yellow, one red, basically mirroring the center line. About eh, eight feet short of the house. Eight to 10. What? And apparently it was only a two. Never blame the Iceman, only got two in the first end, so they're up 2 nothing over Ingles from Potomac. <laughs> Ashley Topley throwing her second stone. stone slightly, actually taking it all the way through the house. Hillary Sparks, second stone. Jimmy asking her to draw around their guard into the house. Sweepers are working it crazy hard. I don't think this is gonna get to the house. It's gonna be lucky if it gets to the other guard. It got, okay, got a little further than the other guard, but it's still six feet short of the house. Chris Barajas looking for a draw behind from Erica Smith, no, I'm sorry, Andrew Schubart's first stone. Coming in, and is it going to be clear? No. There is a chip. Chip's over, and four stones have been thrown. Four st five stones have been thrown. Four of them are in front of the house. Nothing in the house at this point. Second, Gene Graspi. See if he can actually get one with the weight to the house rather than going through. It's got the weight to get to the house. I 
Yeah. Here it's got the weight to go through the house. It does. The opposing skip didn't even have to put a broom to it. Just glided through. So we still have four up top, nothing in. As we're moving to, no, I'm sorry, second, second, second stones. Andrew Schubert being asked to pull the draw. Is gonna chip the guard. Put a fifth stone in front. Although the center line still has still has plenty of room. Yeah, usually uh, in my experience on this, this ice, the second end tends to sort of feel, uh, we call it downhill. Obviously, our ice is level, or at least as level as you can get it to One within hopes. tolerances. Yeah. But the sort of combined effect of the ice being slow in the first end and then picking up and coming home in the second makes it feel like throwing toward the warm room carries further. Right. We're not seeing that this game at all. We're not seeing that yet. No, not at all. Although here's one on the outside that might actually stick in the house when it's all said and done. Maybe. Possibly. Or never mind. Nope, that is that over the back. Also about, that was also just past the end line and out of play. Look promising there for a second, though. It teased me. So we've had five short and three through so far at this end. Yeah. As we move to the vices, Erica Smith-Schubert throwing her first stone of the second end. Let's see if the vices have draw weight. This looks like it's got to be more likely to be a promote than a draw. Unless it really starts to cut, it's going to make contact, and it's not going to have the weight to chip that in. So six short, three long. And that also kind of blocks up that center draw line. Um, honestly, if I was Fallon, I think I'd be starting to think about playing this end for a blank and just saying, hey, let's play the third end instead. What do you think? That might end up being sort of what happens anyway here at this point. Well, there's still some promote action that can happen. Although that would require a level of weight control that neither team has demonstrated yet this end. Hangs out to the outside. <laughs> Erica Smith Schubert throwing her first, no, I'm sorry, throwing her second. By Stone. They're trying for instead of a straight draw, they're trying for an in off on the one that was just thrown, and it actually is going to succeed. Yes, it grabs a chunk of the 12 foot up at the top of the house. I'm overly excited about that for some strange reason. I mean, it's uh, in the house and it's undercover, so yeah, for the red team. Really good, that's a really good result. Yeah, they were very, the, that's exactly what they asked for. For the red team trying to steal, that's a good spot to start with. Exactly. Now, it's weird to be starting as they go into Skip's Rocks, but. Yeah, well, you know. You take what you can get. Exactly. So, and now, the worst, the even adding insult to injury, Jimmy Fallon doesn't have a stone to do that in off off of, so he has to try to play the draw to do a little bit better. And this one is almost certainly too heavy to stick in the house. Yep. It's through. Neither team has draw weight at the moment. That in-off is the only uh, shot that was at all at all well executed. We'll put it that way. There's I mean, I'm sure the, the first couple of guards were well executed. 
actually only the first guard was well executed because the second guard wasn't actually called to be a guard. Oh. It was supposed to be a draw around. It ended up it ended up tapping and splitting. Oh, right. Yeah. So, yeah, the first guard was good. You're right. You're absolutely correct. I would say somewhere someone must have called a guard. <laughs> I mean, maybe Really, not. only the first stone of this end was actually a called guard. Everything else has been short with extreme prejudice. Chris Barajas going down for his first skips stoon of the second end. They're calling for a. Hmm? Uh, put what up? Oh, yeah. Looking for a either a draw in or a tap promote over here on the side. I'm not sure if they're gonna get there. Nope, it's just gonna guard up. And folks, just as a uh, just as a note. We do we yeah you know, we do have a uh, chat going on on this broadcast. So if you want to uh, take a look and see if you have any questions or anything about this game or you know the other game going on, certainly just feel free to ask it in the chat, and we will certainly answer those questions as quickly as we can. So I'm um, pulling up the chat right now, trying to at least. OK, so we're being asked which teams are playing on sheet A. Sheet A is Never Blame the Iceman from Bucks County versus Ingalls from Potomac. So. That's how that's going. And over there, uh, Never Blame the Iceman took two in the first end. Jimmy Fallon trying to draw in with his stone. This looks like it. No, it's not. Oh, it's too it, heavy. It it's looked through. nice. I think they just held it too much for the yep. line, and now and oh, there it, it goes. Yep. Oh, that was heavy anyway. I don't know. That was. So we are down to the final stones for each team in this second end. Currently, um, Rajas from Rochester sitting one. Jimmy Fallon trying like hell to find draw win. So the red team flashes one through over on the edge. So Jimmy's got one stone to draw for one point to tie the game. Yep. And he's going to ask. He's he's asking for a draw. I don't know. He's he's, he's been looking for draw weight the whole the whole time through. So we'll see what we'll, we'll see if he can pull it off. Stone is definitely on its way. Doesn't look bad. Uh, sweepers can't hurt it at Not this point. Not going to go through, that's for sure. Question is, can the sweepers get it there? They need about two more feet, about one more foot. Uh, yes, he did. He got there. Ooh, well, maybe not. I think he's full 12 versus the red one. That's not yep. full 12. And but the, we'll skips see are def uh, the vices are definitely uh, kicking it off. So. That means that it's tied up at one now. 
Jimmy manages to, uh, Jimmy Fallon manages to take his one. And tie after two, we're tied up 1-1. One, one. Here on sheet B. And we're still throwing the second end over on sheet A. Hello, oh, Linda Barajas, welcome to the uh, chat. And welcome to watching the game, hope you're enjoying it. We have no way to relay your hello, although we'll tell them when they come off the ice, but that's gonna be a couple hours from now. All right, so we're underway in the third end. Ashley Topley, the lead. The Brajas team representing the Rochester Curling Club. Throwing, looks like it's gonna be at least into the house. And it's straddling the tee line over on the, uh, just in the uh, right hand side of the forefoot. And Chris Barajas asking Ashley Topley to basically mirror image it on the other side is what it looks like he was asking for. So the winners of these two games will be playing at noon tomorrow for the B event championship. They'll be, odd, um, ironically enough, curling on sheet C, but you know, it is what it is. Um, and that's what they're playing for. The teams that lose will unfortunately be done with the bond spiel. It's, that's, the, that's the risk you play if you're in any semifinal with the exception of the A event semifinal. It's play the final or pack your bags. Yeah. 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 True, but in a bomb spiel, it only runs, you know, to Sunday afternoon. If you make it to, uh, you know, midnight Saturday night, you've pretty much played the whole tournament. That's true. And I remember a couple of bomb spiels where 12:01, the teams were on the ice. Right? Yay! We made it to Sunday. I I have done that myself, actually. Yeah. The, the other people on the ice were not as pleased with my little joke yeah. about playing on Sunday as everyone else was. So this game, or this this end rather, um, everything's in the house so far. As we're throwing, uh, oh, maybe uh, maybe this Ashley is the down Topley's maybe this is the downhill side of the sheet. Could be downhill this way. Yeah. Directional pebble. Makes sense. So over on sheet A, this game could be about to be broken wide open. Uh, yellow uh, Ingles from Potomac already sitting three, throwing the hammer attempting to draw for four, and there's no real chance that they're gonna screw up and promote a uh, red in or anything, so unless this misses the house, they're gonna score four. Or actually, I'm sorry, I think it may only be two. It may only be two working on a third. There's one in the back of the house, I can't actually tell if it's fighting or not. It's at least two, might be three, working on either a three or a four. This, the draw makes it to the top of the house, so it's at least three. The question about is about that other one. I don't know, but they at least got their three to go up three to one, three to two. Might have been four to go up four to two. Hard to tell. We'll know for sure as soon as they hang the number. Fallon chipping his back off. I'm not sure that's what he meant to do. And rolling to a position where he's guarding the back of the house. Three stones in the forefoot, two belonging to Jimmy Fallon's team, one belonging to Barra House from Rochester. Where Rochester's is the shot. There's also a red stone up at the 12 foot on the center line. That's the situation as the uh, seconds begin doing their work for the down. Yeah. Yeah. Andrew Schubert being asked to remove at least one of the yellow stones. He's definitely on one. He might actually get them both. He's got one. He makes contact with the other one. Taps it back a little bit. Red is now sitting two. Pretty much on the button. But there's nothing in front of it. So this situation could be changed very quickly if so desired. And that looks to be pretty much exactly what Jimmy Fallon is asking Gene Grosby to do. Being asked to throw the high heat and move the yellows, move the red stones around. 
Sweepers were on it for a second. They are called up. Now they're back on it. Contact with the top, contact with two, three. The yellow sacrifice, no, actually it's not. It's in the back 12. The two reds are kind of split. They're still both technically in the forefoot, but now they're split. Neither of them are behind cover. Basically the house gets totally, totally changed by that stone. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Second, Erica Smith-Schubert throwing a guard up, guarding, trying to guard the uh, what is currently the shot stone. Didn't really succeed. Jimmy Fallon asking, I th think, for a hit and roll in. Yep. Yes. Sweepers are on it quickly. Yeah, yeah, you got it. You got it. Hard. Contact with the first. No, but nigh. Ooh, just a just a just a brief little kiss as it went past. Didn't change anything. It is Valentine's Day weekend, so a brief little kiss as it goes past is, you know, strangely appropriate, I guess. But that's basically a miss. Erica Smith Schubert for Team Brajas being asked to put a guard up to guard the second shot. First stone is on its way. Sweeper's on it almost immediately. I think it's for line as much as it is for weight. It's over curling a little bit. And it's not guarding the shot stone. So, Jimmy Fallon has another opportunity to have Emily English make the shot. He's giving it a little bit more ice. Makes sense because she missed the first one on the inside slightly. This one's on its way. Sweepers are on it hard. Looks like she's going to make contact. Yep. Chips that out. Shooter rolls out of the rings. Still in play. But out of the rings. Red is still sitting one in the forefoot over on the right-hand side. Jimmy Fallon's team has yellow in second and third shot. As Barajas gets ready to have Erica throw her second seconds her second seconds stone and I believe he's asking her to like to kind of sit on the one in the back of the house or maybe it's just a drive behind the cover it's a drive behind the cover and it's going to be well short of that it's going to be a guard Fairly high. Jimmy evaluating options. His lead telling him, "I can see we can see half of that stone. Why don't we just go after it?" Considering he's considering it. And it looks like that's what they're going for. The broom has been placed for what would be an attempt at a hit. It's gonna need to be a fairly high weight for that for that line to go, but it's a fairly narrow port, so it should be a high a pretty high weight anyhow. More likely he's probably gonna open something up. Yeah, you really don't want to tick your own in the top 12 here. Right. Um, 
But if you do, it is open back up again, and that's the only red in the house, so you don't lose a ton losing one of the yellows, but yeah, you'd hate to take away your shot at scoring this end. Looking to put it through the hole, getting the sweepers on it immediately. Feels like it's inside. It is in, yeah, it's inside. He's the, the tick that we were just discussing is gonna be what's gonna happen, and I'm pretty sure that it's gonna go clean out of play. The shooter is gonna roll also, uh, no. The shooter actually is in that no man's land between the edge of the 12 foot and the sideline. Actually, it's probably fighting, looking, look, looking from the, looking down the sheet, it looks like it's covering blue. Looking at the camera, because we were talking about the fish eyeing earlier, it looks like there's white, but I don't think that, I think it actually, I think it's actually there. Yeah, I think looking. we're seeing under the stone. From yeah, the see, because I'm, I'm seeing from here, I actually have a dead on shot on it, and I see blue underneath the edge. Yeah. So that stone's on. So right now. If it matters, Fallon, they'll get out the biter bar. Exactly. Right Fallon is still lying, second stone and third stone. The shot still belongs to Chris Barajas, who is, conveniently enough, getting ready to throw his first skip stone. And the broom is laid. They just want to put a guard down, because right now that shot stone is, is more or less completely open. So they're just looking to put a guard. Shot is underway. Actually, it's a little tight. I'm not sure. It's going to tick off of their other guard, roll over behind. It's actually going to nuzzle the. Yeah, okay, so that's definitely in the house now. So that's definitely third shot. So that yellow one that we were worried about over on the side, no longer relevant. But. The but shot the shot stone now even is, more exposed. Is, is completely exposed. You could drive a semi through that hole. Okay, uh, maybe not a semi. Maybe not a semi, but maybe my hatchback. I Yeah, a mini would definitely make it, no problem. Would really, would the ice crew would not be pleased. Well, no, but. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Jimmy's shot is underway. Needs to come back a little bit. Right now, I don't know if it's clear that, if it's clear that guard. Okay, now it is. It's good. It looks like it's going to be a quarter hit. It's going to roll to the side. And it's going to bury. Look at that. It became shot. Buried. Well played. Very well played for Jimmy Fallon. However, the uh, four-lane expressway to the, to the button is still open. But yeah. Fallon's got the, no, he doesn't. Fallon does not have the hammer. No, he Barajas doesn't, but he made the, the perfect shot for the force there. Right, and yeah, Barajas has nothing to do but draw in in an attempt to get his one. I say attempt because <laughs> draw weight's been an adventure so far this game, although not so much this way. Coming home has been the uh, adventure. So Chris Barajas looking to draw for his force of one. Sweepers aren't touching it one bit. Now is one of them starting to just kind of just kind of keep the it clean for a second. The line looks a little close, but it looks like it could it's be heavy. So. There's plenty of room. Oh, okay. He's actually going to use the yellow as a backer. Oh, but it's going to use the wrong yellow no, as a backer. it does. It actually slips past. Fallon steals one. That stone that he just threw was in the exact right place. Jimmy Fallon steals one to go up 2-1 after three. And somehow Rob Chester hasn't noticed. Not Sorry, I'm giving I'm giving one of the folks in the warm room grief because well he needs it. So we are now in the in the fourth end. Fallon up after his steal. Two to one. The game over on sheet A between the uh, Never Blame the Iceman and Ingles from Potomac is working its way through the end of the third end. So they don't have quite they don't quite have a score yet. Oops, I gotta Jimmy Fallon asking his lead Hillary Sparks to throw up center guard, as is fairly traditional at this level of curling, um, and is fairly common at this level of curling. It slides a little deep and covers the button. 
beautiful draw to the pin. That would win virtually every draw to the pin competition ever ever competed. Uh, yeah, covering the pin will win a draw to the pin competition. Uh, yeah, yes, almost always, yeah. Well, uh, you can't lose with a zero, I don't think. Can well, you? you can, but that's because they've changed the way you do the measuring rules, but it's oh. screwy. You can be beaten by a better zero. Oh, the center of the stone more yeah. often? Oh. It's weird. But that's irrelevant because we're not doing that right now and because there's 15 more stones to come. So if that stone is still on the pin at the end, I'll be moderately amazed. If that stone's still on the pin in 15 seconds, I'll be moderately amazed because Chris Barajas is, asked, yeah. asked Ashley Topley to do a hit, at least a tap back. But, you know, actually, I don't right think, she, it, yeah, but but I don't think it's getting enough. there. It's going to freeze. Gonna, it's going to be a freeze. Okay, it's not covering it's not the, on pin the pin anymore. It's still on the button, however. And so. now we've changed format to mixed doubles. <laughs> no, there's 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 no stone up on the up on up on the cross hatch. Maybe yet. we just tick them. You know, play tick shots in mixed doubles. I've never seen a tick shot in mixed doubles. Well, I'm not sure why not. But I don't know. It just never happens. Um. So Jimmy Fallon actually was asking for a guard in front with like no more than a freeze, and that's about what she's gonna get. What he's gonna get a guard in front with no more than a freeze. Actually, enough of a oh. tap. Now the red is technically covering the button, I guess. Probably, yeah, no question. The red is shot. Yellow is uh, protecting it in the back. There's enough offset on the yellow in front that um, a three-way spill could easily occur. Um, Chris Barajas is considering his options. I believe he's saying, hey, why don't we throw a guard in front of the whole, in front of the whole mess? That sounds like a great plan. Let's do that. Seems fine. Seems like a logical conclusion. I have seen significantly worse shots thrown, that's for sure. Uh, this, however, does seem kind of heavy for a guard. It's coming down, and yeah, it's gonna it's gonna make contact. Oh, and it might even it's gonna make, make contact directly with the it, red. Yeah, it's, it's gonna make not significant gonna hit the contact. At all. It. The red is still on the button, but the uh, yellow backer has just been basically been wasted. So what it would be fairly easy for Fallon to do is take his yellow, pop it into the red. That's exactly what he's yep. calling. Take his yellow, pop it into the red. The yellow probably stays put. The red scoots out through the port. Fallon does not lie too because there's a red over on the edge of the forefoot that's out counting Fallon's one in the back. But still, this battle for the button is uh, it's heating up. It's heating up, yeah. Sweeper's on this pretty hard. It's because, oh, his stone's gonna be on the inside Way this on the inside. All it's going to do is be what he, Oh, well, okay. So it takes out that other one. That was a very that's interesting result, not, actually. Yeah, that's not horrible, really. Yellow now sitting all around the perimeter <laughs> of the four-foot circle. Red sitting dead on the button. Dead on the button, but there is still there's still two very wide ports that that redstone could be moved through. Oh yeah, there's to get off the button. Jam no possibility, but yeah, the exactly. rocks are so close together that it's easy to hit it and punch it through either one of those ports. Or meanwhile, if you lose a yellow, you've got two other ones in there too. Meanwhile, there's a filibuster going on on sheet A about what to do with what may be the hammer. No, it's not even the hammer. What to do with yellow's last stone. Red has the hammer. There's a, fil but there's a filibuster going on over there. They've been talking about it for three minutes easily. Well, it wouldn't be a national capital curling club without a, exactly. uh, without a filibuster. That's why I broke out the word. Yes, snark attacks from the commentator's booth. We're all about the snark. It's the Saturday night draw. You must be new here, LF. Welcome to the chat. So, um, <laughs> Potomac Curling Club after dark. Exactly. A high guard put up by Barajas' second Erica Smith Schubert. Jimmy Fallon asking his second. Gian, um, Gian Grosby to pick that yellow, pick that red stone out, but I think this is a little on the heavy side. Actually, it's a lot on the heavy side. So it's going to hit his yellow back there. Basically, just replace one yellow stone with another yellow stone, not really changing the situation at all. So we are on to 
I'm sorry, uh, Andrew Schubert's second. No, wait a minute. What? Yeah. Okay. Reds, second, second stone. Andrew Schubert. Okay. They're asking him to kind of take this uh, yellow shot or yellow second stone that Jimmy Fallon has on the outside of the 12, outside the 4, and roll in towards the button. And it looks like that's exactly what they're going to do. Look at that and that. Yep, that's exactly what they asked for, and they got it. So now there's two red stones bracketing the button, and there's a red guard that you can't see on the well, you can see on the overhead. You can see, you can see on, on the, the yeah, you can see on the yeah. long shot, um, sitting about five, six feet in front of the house, guarding the whole you know run down the center line split thing. So Jimmy Fallon asking to come and take them out via a uh, chip sort of thing. Gets the seepers on it quickly. I think if they're not yeah. really effective, oh no, this is gonna be, this is gonna split out the guard, I think. Or did he sneak past? No, he snuck past. Well thrown. Takes well out thrown that. Well thrown and well swept. Yes. Takes that red out. So last time we came this direction, we had nine guards and three rocks through the house. Exactly. Now we have everything in the forefoot four circle. Foot. We're fighting for the f possession of the forefoot. The race to the button began on the second That's shot of the exactly. end. Exactly. Really, the first shot of the end. The first shot was a draw to the pin. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's gone downhill from there. Erica Smith-Schubert throwing her first stone. And... What is what are they asking her to do? Are they asking her to just draw into the mess? I think they're asking her to draw into the mess. Or guard the mess. Although honestly, Barajas really wouldn't really doesn't want to just take one here. He's got the hammer. So he wants to be in a position to take his two or more. But a guard is what he gets. Whether it was what he wanted or not, I don't know, but it is what he got. So Fallon is asking Emily English for, basically he's asking for a backline weight raise sort of thing, tap his yellow into the red that's all but frozen, and because of the way the geometry works, if he makes that, the red scoots through and Fallon sits a lot. So the question is, does it get through the hole? Does Emily English's shot get through the hole? It is past the top guard. It is clear of the second guard. It makes the contact. The red shoots out just like we said. The shooter hangs. Actually, the red doesn't shoot all the way out. It's just fighting the 12, but yellow sits four. And Chris Barajas is asking his vice, Erica Smith-Schubert, to draw to the button from, the, from our left to our right, as you see it, right to left. And they finally... Looks like it's a lot of weight. They finally finished the third end over on sheet A with a take of one by red to tie that game up at three. So that's, oh. that ended up nosing. Yeah, it looks like, yeah, I think the call was sort of like they did in the last one. You're trying to hit and roll toward the button there, but yeah, just but didn't get nosed. enough roll. Right. Yep. So now it does take Fallon down to two, where he was sitting four, so... That does. That is a useful shot. And he's discussing with his vice Emily English what he wants to do. Looks like he's trying to play something to provide some protection to that shot stone. Because Fallon does not have the hammer here. Down. Looks like it's probably just a hit and roll here. Yeah, hit, yeah, hit, hit, hit the red and roll in. Yep, that, that is that is the call. So probably looking for a hack weight, maybe a little bit more than hack weight, just to make sure. Um, hit yeah, three quarters of the inside of the stone. Roll in towards the center pile. Yeah, just get everything on the center line under that yep. guard. 
Jimmy gets in the hack and gets down to business, throws that stone almost immediately, but it seems like almost before he got there, but bringing it in, feels real light. It is real light. This is a draw, this yeah, is not a hit not and roll. Hit. This is a draw. But it doesn't but it's look a like well a bad played draw. draw. It's a well played draw. He's gonna get in there and he is Give gonna be maybe third. Well, that's gonna oh. questionable. Yeah, I, the line was really good, so I could see why the sweepers didn't want to drag it at the end. Um, but it, and I, I guess I Jimmy, dragged. and I guess Jimmy stealing doesn't need to sit all three. No, and it does provide that does provide cover for his yeah. shot stone. Yeah, no, that's from the from the from the uh, right to left, and it prevents them from coming down to the back one a little bit too. Yeah, although that wouldn't help anyway, other Not than really. cutting them down to one. Right. So Chris Brahas is getting ready to throw his first of two stones here in the fourth end. Taking a long, hard look at the situation. He's facing two right now, but the first of those two shots is available to him. At least half of it is on the outside. And with the anglage, actually, truthfully, he could take the seconds. He, he could, the double's very much in order. But. I don't know. I think he's, yeah, he's, yeah, he's playing the hit. And if he doesn't, if, if, if he's inside on this, he's going he's gonna to peel a guard. And it's kind of late in the game to be just peeling guards. Especially your own guard. Oh, yeah, good point. Stone is on its way. Sweeper's not touching it. Is it past the outer top guard? Yes, it is. Just barely. It comes in and it gets the touch on the other. Gets the back one moving, but not moving far enough. So, but red. Actually, no. I think that turned red into shot. Red does look closer. From red is my red is almost point. certainly the shot stone. However, what red is not is behind any cover. That's not the arm of my chair at all. That's what we're looking at there, and it does indeed appear Yeah, that, that red the redstone stone by the head of that broom is the shot stone. Yeah, and is not behind any sort of cover at all. That being the perhaps more important facet of the, the current situation than it, the fact that it is shot. Yeah, and Jimmy Fallon is lining up for a hit, and actually if he gets this hit and the shooter sticks around, he's laying four which would be a perfect force to uh, make Brahas just have to have to throw a shot to take his one. It's actually not a trivial shot to take the one. But first things no, first. With the, yeah, with the, cor with the high yeah. corner guard, there's not really a straight draw to the button like yeah. there normally would be here. Yeah, first things first. Jimmy Fallon has to make the hit. Sweepers are not on it. Line feels a little wide to me. Well, yes. got sweepers are on it, so now it's, so it's I guess coming, that's it's gonna it's gonna make they contact. Think it gets there maybe. and actually is it gonna spit through the port? I think it yes, it does. Excellently executed. The shooter does roll a little too far outside to be laying four. They're only laying three, but that's that's still enough to force a draw to the button. Exactly. Yeah. It forces the button draw and well, touch red. I mean, the whole forefoot is yeah, open. But, but the in-turn line is not there because of the very high red guard. The out-turn line is all you have is the edge of the forefoot from the outside. Yeah, this is, it's not, I mean, it, for as. that for, line is out in the questionable ice on the edge where yeah. I think we've, we've, we've seen some, we've seen wackiness. Yeah, for that. as wide open as the sheet really is, there's hey, not right an on. easy draw to the center yeah. line. Yeah. And okay, so they're choosing to uh, go out into the danger zone. They're choosing to go out into the danger zone out here in the 12 foot for the draw in. Basically what they need to take, what he needs to take is one is he's, he doesn't actually need to get to the four foot. He just needs more than half of the eight foot. And he's in there. But it's out here and we've seen a couple of shots out here with with some with some iffy weights, we've seen some heavy shots. Actually, truthfully, if he if he noses that cover shot, he might even get shot out of. Noses that one in the back, he might get one out of it. Hard to say, but this is just a pure draw. 
I don't. I'd have the sweepers on because I don't think it's there yet. It's very close, but they definitely wouldn't be hurting it. So they. And oh, oh, oh. he's got his bite of the forefoot. That is a. That is yes. close enough to be close a enough. shot. Yep. yep, that is shot. So red. Chris Brahas takes his one. Chris Brahas takes his one, evens the game up after four ends, tied at three. No, I'm sorry, tied at two. There, switch the end, switch the hand. It's been a, it's been a one palooza. Turn off the house cam. Fourth end is still going on over here on sheet A, as yes, we're cleaning up and getting ready for the are. fifth end. One's back and forth, two to two. And welcome to the broadcast, the Shaw family, Melvin and Courtney. Courtney choosing to spend their pre-Valentine's Day evening with us here. On the plus side, this game will almost certainly be over before Valentine's Day. I must say, it was very smart of the GNCC a few years ago to switch the Kaiser and the Dykes spawn spiels because previously it was the Dykes which was on Valentine's Day weekend. Oh, that's a terrible Valentine's that Day. That was, event. exactly. Hey, honey, happy Valentine's Day. I'm going to Rochester to, for, to be with a bunch of guys for four days. Yeah, that never worked well. So they moved that, or they, they moved that. So now they have the mixed on Valentine's Day weekend, which, you know, seems kind of works. reasonable, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, although on the other hand, I wonder how often there's uh, folks having to go Sleep in the uh, on the on the couch in the hotel room after you know like totally botching a shot in the last end to lose the game. That's their problem. The GNCC gave them an excuse to take a nice couples getaway, and if they ruin it for themselves, that's on them. <laughs> okay, and on the chat, the Shahs are expressing their love for each other apparently through giving kittens. I, I'm not even sure what to say about that. So I'm not going to say anything, and instead I'm going to devote my attention to the fifth end of the Fallon-Barajas battle, currently tied at two, as Barajas' lead, Ashley Topley, throwing her first stone. She's being asked to come in behind the cover. I'm sorry, it's actually her second stone, not her first stone. But she's still being asked to come in behind the cover. It's looking a little light. It is looking a little light. So actually, it's going to be a second second center guard. And there it is. So Fallon getting ready to throw Emily English's first stone. No, I'm sorry. Wrong. We run that back. Hillary Sparks, second stone. I can't read. asking her to draw behind the now double cover up front. This has a little bit better weight, but it's wider. I'm, oh, it's gonna be there. Pretty sure it's not gonna bury. It's it gonna get house. It's gonna stick around in the house, through. unless it goes through. It's cruising. It's slowing down a bit in the house. I don't know, I can't tell because no one switched the monitor yet. There we go. There it is. It's, it's stuck in, in yeah. Just brackets the four, the eight foot, the 12 foot in the back of the house over to the left side uh, about a foot off the center line. Not buried at all, however. No. So odds are good that uh, Andrew Schubert is going to make that stone go bye-bye. Sweepers are on it to uh, hold the line, but they're not working terribly hard at it. This might be more like a draw. Maybe just a little tap on that back stone. That actually did draw in, but it drew in with hit weight, which is a problem because it now sits. No, it hung on in the back somehow. It's just hanging on in the back by just a hair of an inch. So Fallon asking Gian, uh, Gian to peel no. one of the guards or run it back, Whoa. either yeah, way. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
probably Peel. Okay, look out for that. Going to get the center guard, not the guard he was actually asked for, but it's guard Peel. So, you know, when in doubt, Peel guards. Schubert throwing his second stone at the end. Being asked to draw into behind the cover, I believe. And I don't think it's happening. No, they're gonna but they're gonna bring this down onto the yellow. No, actually they're gonna miss the yellow. Oh, yes they are. It's gonna be in the back of the house. Second stone. And exposed. So Fallon, yep, Fallon asking asking for a shot on the button basically, which is perfect because they're not that's gonna be hard to remove because it's behind a guard. And there's a wall behind it now. So Stone seems like it's staying fairly wide. It's not cutting. It's not going to get back to the not going to get back to the center line. It's certainly not going to be buried. It's also deep, but it's going to tap the red in the back, and it actually also actually also takes one of the reds. Oh, no, it doesn't actually. That, is that second red? No, it's still touching. It's still hanging on the back line, isn't it? Okay. You can only see its shadow on the overhead cam, so I but don't but they're not kicking it out, so it must still be there because yeah. they at least think it's in, and if they think it's in, it's in. Yeah, exactly. They get to decide that. <laughs> they're calling on ours. Erica Smith Schubert throwing what is her first stone of the end, being asked to draw in. This is not a recording. Looks. Looks wide. This oh. is also not a recording. And I was going to say it looked a hog. little light, and then it didn't look that light, and then all of a and sudden it And then it looked extremely hogged. light. Yeah. So light, in fact, that it was hogged. Or it was where they burned it, and they stopped it. it. But it, maybe it could have picked, maybe, and so they just kind of gave up on it. Um, Whatever it was, it went poorly. Yeah. It, so not, not the call shot. No. So Fallon is actually asking for a guard to be put in front of his shots, which are currently 1-2. Um, be happy with a guard. Be happy with something full in the 12 foot. No deeper than that would be would be desirable. He's got the sweepers working hard, and then up because the stone's wide and actually feels like it's falling off. They're trying to generate a curl, but that, that's not that never works. At least not at this level. So that stone is a corner guard, but there's no stones in that corner. So, um, yeah. Erica Smith Schubert being asked to hit, I think, is a safe bet. Nice high hard push. But I think she flipped it. She did flip it. So actually, that guard that I was just dissing is going to turn out to have been the exact right spot. It is peeled. But the red Although stone actually rolls the red in stone and is, is. Oh, it's not going to be the shot stone. No. It but it is two. It needed to dig in and spin a little. But it is two. It is the two stone. Yeah, this one shot. That's two. Okay. Thanks, Jimmy, for making it abundantly up. clear for our home audience of. 64 people. Oh, wow, that's the most I've seen so far in the last couple of drives. We have enough people watching this game to fill out our very own NCAA tournament bracket. Why we'd want to do that, I don't know, but we could. Emily English throwing her second stone, I believe. Possibly her first. Second stone. Jimmy Fallon asking her for a guard. But no, actually asking her to draw in. And she did, in fact, do exactly that. She is on the center line, just touching the forefoot, not covered. 
but is in a position where it's going to be hard to get to the nose to it with enough weight to do anything. And chipping it out without rolling out would be entertaining. It's not a bad spot to be, really. Fourth end has ended over on sheet A, but we don't know what the score is other than to say that yellow must have scored. Actually, no, it's not true. We don't know. It could have blanked. Either yellow scored or it was blanked. We're not sure which. The game was tied at three after three. Uncertain what happened in the fourth yet. And apparently somebody's not in the game. Chris Barajas throwing his first stone. He's looking to do some hitting, 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 hitting. And he's going to hit that one that was on the forefoot pretty well. Just to ground and... And they finally take care of that stone that was sitting on the back of the uh, in the back of the house for the whole flipping end. It's finally gone now. Hooray! And he's currently sitting shot, but he is wide open. Jimmy Fallon is going to hit that, and in a perfect world, he just just crosses the face, hits it, sits up there in the top eight behind the cover on the center line. Nice little spot. Jimmy Fallon has the, has the hammer this end in this game tied up in the B event semifinal. Jimmy Stone is underway. Yeah, okay, it's gonna make it's gonna make contact with that top red as the shooter rolls to the outside. Not enough to be anything. No, yes. The yellow in the back eight is still gonna be the shot stone. Yeah, and the red on the left on the right hand side, just in the twelve, is the two. Yellow is lying three and four. Red does have the fifth stone in. Uh, in order to peel a guard, Jeremy, there'd have to be one. Oh, no, there is one. There is actually a guard, a singular guard that's not actually guarding much of anything, really. So I don't think peeling the guard is, is the shot that's going to be called. Pretty sure it's going to be a high hard one to take two of those yellows out. Looked to me like he shoved that a little bit on the release. Sweepers are right on it, so uh, now they're off of it. Looks outside the line to me. Now it's coming back. It's coming back nicely. Makes contact one, just chips it out, rolls to the inside, possibly too far to the inside to be advisable. Is sitting shot, did not get to behind <laughs> the guard. So pretty sure Jimmy Fallon is not going to peel this guard either. Generally, if you're building a guard with a hammer, you've done, something, done something wrong. something horribly wrong. Actually, what he would like to do is, and actually, truthfully. Because of the red sitting 1-2, Jimmy doesn't have a shot at 2 here, though. No. Unless, he, unless, unless he's thinking that our angle is, is deceiving us, and he may actually have the second shot. Which is also possible. Which is also possible, because it looks like that's what he, It looks like he's calling to pick that red out which would get him one, and I guess he's... I guess he figures he'll take the one and then take the see one if they if measure for the two. I mean, yeah, and if he yeah. happens to get lucky that's with the measurement or something, that's that's gravy. Otherwise, he would just he would have just had an open draw, really. He could even have had an open draw with cover. Sweepers are on this. Needs to make it to cover, needs to not over curl. Needs to get to Curry. Okay, he's got the contact. That's fine. Okay, that certainly is one. And we think it's not two, but they're going to look. Well, they kicked, so I'm pretty away, sure it's so just it's the one. I'm pretty sure it's just the one. Am 
My wife is joining the conversation for no apparent reason. Hi, sweetie. See, I told you I was here. And, yeah. So, uh, we are now at the... We are now in the sixth end. Fallon up 3-2. That stone is taking a serious hook. It is, it's, I think it, I think it picks, peeled, picks up, up a little bit. It is a corner guard. Fallon guarding the corner very nicely. Not really what he wanted to do, but it's what he was doing. So, hey. Ashley Topley getting ready to throw Team Barajas' first stone of the game. Or oh. first or the end, rather. Yeah. There's been lots of stones in the game. About 40 of them, actually. No, about 80 of them. This one looks like it's going to be through the house. That's coming in behind the tee, but probably Slowing not Slowing down. No, I don't even know if it's behind the tee. I'm not even sure wow. it makes the house. That's not even, wow. Somebody put the brakes in. For somebody put somebody tossed some sand in front of that stone because that stone hit some serious deceleration. At the hog line, that looked like it had a ton. I don't disagree. Oh, good. I'm glad it wasn't just me. No, you're not insane. Well, well, not uh, not as far as my perception of stones. Right. right. So uh, Hillary Sparks being asked yeah. to take that stone out. Got to be honest, the line looks like she's not going to get there. Although she might chip off the guard. She might get a top. No, she gets it. Nope, she has it right through the hole. Clean miss. So Brahas asking for Ashley to put a guard in front of that stone just biting up top. Stone is on its way. Sweepers get on it in a hurry. Dorothy from Rochester is apparently a Brajas fan. She says, let's go Rochester. And right now they're gonna have to go to get this over the hog. Okay, they get it over the hog and they bring it to the center line. Doesn't actually guard, well, it guards, the, guards one of the turns at that shot stone, but not the other tone, turn. So Jimmy Fallon asking Gian Grosby to take that on what would be actually technically, I guess, an intern. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's his out turn. Is that his out turn? That is his out turn. Yeah. I can never keep that stuff straight. Uh, it's basically Doesn't just the way your elbow moves. And it's a pick is what it is. It picked the front stone. Oh, and then the rolls guard, to guard this Rolls stone to guard. Not great, but not the worst thing. Yeah. I mean, if this, they didn't fully guard, and even covering that stone is terrible. Like, yeah. it's not going to kill them, but no. No. not the result they were looking for. No, not at all. And they're still playing the fifth end over on sheet A. Lots of stones in play. Possibly every single stone on the sheet. I'm not seeing any stone that kicked behind. No, one red stone is behind. Exactly, yes, Melvin. There is a nice run back set up there. And that stone did not get anywhere near as deep as was intended. It seems like there's like a, almost like a glue patch out there on the outside. Uh, Fallon apparently feels like he can get there without doing the run back, just by doing a draw at it. No, that's probably a draw, heavy draw. So he's at, that's what he's asking uh, Gian to do. Yep, 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 yep. Gian's on, throwing what looks on, to me to be about on, hack. I don't know if this is going to come back on. enough. Oh, it's starting to bite. It hard, might. Hard, no. Hard, 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 hard. Pass on the, I messed it by a whole stone. Missed by a stone's width. I think Jimmy was asking for a little too much movement at that weight. 
Yeah, I don't really blame him for trying. It is probably at least a third exposed. Yeah. But, but I would I would have played it a lot closer. Yeah. That's and what then because if you if you tick your guard, that doesn't hurt anything doesn't hurt really either. either. You yeah. might actually split and end up with corner guards or something. Right. Not that Jimmy actually wants corner guards at the moment, but. No, but you never know. Opening up the center back. Sometimes up they're useful. Well. This is five and under level. Corner guard, yeah. a, a, any guard, any stone in play is useful. And that is going to tap to actually make the run back even straighter. But actually, it's covered. And now that redstone is actually covering a corner of it, of the top yellow guards. So I don't actually think the straight run back, I don't think you can get there now. No, there's just the. I mean, just from the camera angle, I can overlap. see some daylight, but I think it's because of the angle, not because yeah. I think there is some is. overlap. There is, there is, there is, there is, there is there's just enough overlap that you're not going to get to the nose. So Jimmy's actually asking for um, Emily English to do a draw behind, although that's not going to happen. That stone is way light. Not yet. All that's going to do is another center line go. Now you're definitely not going to do the run back. Now the run back is actually physically impossible. Um, at least with one, yeah. All right, we got some competing predictions going on now. Uh, Jeremy, Jeremy Vanderhooten believes that Yellow's going to steal this end. Dorothy, on the other hand, is, is a Rochester fan. She's calling for a red three. So they can't both be right. No, that, that much is certainly correct. We cannot have three red and one yellow. But they could both time. be very wrong. Erica Smith-Schubert Stone is on its way. It is also going to check up and be a guard now, you know. The forefoot is basically inaccessible at this point. Yeah. I will point out to anyone who likes to have past information before they make a bet, and so far in five ends, we've had five ones. True statement. So anyone putting money on a three is probably going to get good value on that. Yeah, that's true. That's a true statement. Okay, yellow playing way to the outside of the sheet here in an attempt to draw around. Tricky part is that has, that ice hasn't been thrown on very much, therefore the pebble's fresh, and things are slow. They're going to get to the ring. Are they? Yes, they are. But They're, they're going to get to be shot stud. They're going to get to the eight foot. <laughs> well, not quite to the eight foot, but very yeah, close. Maybe touching the eight foot. And looks like Chris is asking Erica to remove that stone. Always dangerous because they're asking the vice to slide fairly wide and get the line right, which can be tricky. Doesn't I, always I know, work. I know I hate throwing hits on the I line. hate these. But looks like this is going to be about perfect. Nice little nose, nice straight nose hit. Yep. Would have liked some roll, but not really an issue with that. Made the made the primary objective of the shot. Yep, exactly. It just makes uh, Team Fallon now have to throw that same really awkward wide hit. Now. Exactly, and actually, even if they throw that awkward out, yeah, they, actually, even if they throw that awkward wide hit, if they knows it, I'm not sure they're shot. If they get the slightest bit of roll to the inside, they would be. Um, so Dorothy's wondering if the ice is that much slower than ours, and ours, I assume, is Rochester, or just slower than before. Uh, a little bit of both. Our ice all season has been a little slower than what I hear Rochester's is. Yep. Yes. And yes. honestly, from my, imp my impressions of this game, obviously I haven't thrown anything today, but yeah, it's slowing down. Oh, this is looking like a pretty nice line. She's got the tip on the inside. She's going to roll in. They're going to roll. Oh, they're going to roll all the way all the to way. the button. Not a nice. That Very is nice. Five out of five that in is, the skills competition. That is an awesome <laughs> shot. So that shot is behind the, that shot is behind the frozen red, frozen, no, no frozen yellow guards on the center line. Additionally, there's a red guard just, well, it's not really a guard, it, up at the top of 12. The shot that previously was shot is not anymore. Um, 
that's, that shot's inaccessible. You can't get there right now. It's not physically possible. You can't get there from here. You cannot get there. Well, okay. You could get there from here, but you would have to do some sort of... Some sort of angle raise, like the vice pointing at this red stone Yeah, here. pretty much. Yeah. That would be exactly, yeah. Or you could play the shot that Melvin's calling for, which is a triple peel. Oh, well, I mean, that's... Because every every under five like, skip has that in their repertoire. At least they all think they do. Well, yeah, I mean, but there's no reason to show off. It's just the B event of the Kaiser. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you save that for when you really need it. Yeah. Stone is on the way. He certainly actually has to wait for a triple peel, but he's not. that's not the line he asked for. Um, I have no idea what's going on because i got four people between me and the rocks, so anything could be going on. I'm seeing everything on the camera. It's on like a two-second delay. Uh, so. And he misses on the outside, and at that weight, that's going to go right through the house. That is a clean miss. So now Jimmy is saying, okay, admittedly that run back is a low percentage shot anyhow, but let's make it a zero percentage shot by putting a uh, guard behind it. Or actually, truthfully, I think he doesn't even mind if he actually just out touch it, just outscores. Yeah, just sitting second shot to make the make yeah. the hard run back only be for for, for one for point. One, yeah, actually, hold 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 it for a steal of one. Yeah. So yeah, that's 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 all Jimmy's doing here. He's it's a defensive sh it's a defensively offensive shot. Okay. Looks like it's a little tight on the line. I think he's actually going to pop that red that they were looking to do the run back with, which doesn't actually suck in there. And uh, I think I, I hear that as the over and up call. I'm not sure if that's yeah. the right sheet, but yeah, you did. Yep. And okay. it is that's going to guard that run back. That sure. guards the run back. That run back is now yeah, extremely unlikely, to the point of impossible. Actually, I think. Yeah, especially with yeah, if that yellow is frozen onto it, there's yeah. no way to hit the red the right direction. Or even if it's not frozen, there's there's no way to hit the red in the right direction because you can't get it to enough of the stone. So, at this point, basically, Chris Barajas is trying to figure out, do I have anything? And i got to be honest, my answer is no. I do not even, well, okay, I see a circus shot. I see a circus shot. He can, um, come, he can come in off the red that's just barely in bounds. I was going to say the red, that's right on, the red that's practically touching the sideline. Yeah, the yeah. red. That's I think <laughs> I, I saw that red then too. It was like I think you can in off of that and oh. get to top button for one. Yeah, but that would be that's a less than one percent shot, and <laughs> guess they should have went for the triple peel. <laughs> the triple peel went and. Okay, so what they're trying is to raise this red on the other side and somehow use it to pick the yellow off of the shot. Unfortunately, from where yeah, I'm I don't, sitting, I, I don't think that that line is from there. From where I'm sitting, that line actually just pops the red into the into the other red that's up at the top of the 12, and it ends up not doing. It. Now, I mean, that doesn't make the situation any worse because no. it's one either way. Um, yeah, I'm not sure that there's a line from this red to the yellow that doesn't go through another now, stone. I mean, honestly, if I was going to try that, I would try to do something with these three in the middle and maybe raise the red into the red or something, you know, throw at 150 miles an hour and see what happens. But, you know, I've been known to do that. And occasionally it works. So... This is really curling this is in not hard. Kind of a oh, he actually, he actually, he's trying to tick in off of it. Oh, he missed... I guess that port was there. The port was there... <laughs> And he's and got back through. 12 to split the house front to back. But that's the yellow lovely. one in the as, middle. As, as hammers go, that one did, was not effective. Um, but honestly, there was nothing he could do. So he can't really feel bad about that. All, uh. he, all he had was a wing and a prayer and hope that maybe there was a pick when, he got, when the stone got to the house. And strangely enough, that didn't happen. So Jeremy, Van, uh, Jeremy Fallon steals one to f get up now 4-2. Uh, I mentioned it before, here it is again, here's your scoreboard, all the ones, all day. <laughs> exactly, nothing but ones. Ones are wild. I got a pair of ones and I got another pair of ones. If anybody gets a two in this game, it's gonna get broken wide open. As we start the seventh end. And we're still rolling the sixth end over on sheet A, which is currently tied after five. 
uh, tied at four because there have been a couple big, big, there's there a two and a three over there. Oh, my. Yeah. A two. And a three. Oh. I, that's more than I can handle right yeah, now. Yeah, I know. I, I, I know. I'm, I, I'm, I'm overly excited. It, it totally confuses me. Um, I'm not sure Jimmy meant to have that go through the house, but it, I didn't. I think it was actually hogged, and they kicked it through the ah, house. Ah, okay. Yeah. That would make much. <laughs> that would make much more sense. <laughs> Ashley Topley throwing her first stone of this seventh end. They're looking for a guard. Looking for a center line guard, which is a little peculiar for a team with the hammer, but meh. That's what they got. Center line guard up top. Jimmy Fallon asking uh, Hillary Sparks to draw in behind. Seems like a plan. Seems like a plan. Seems like a lot of weight for that. Eight looks. And, oh, and, they put and the it looks narrow. And then they put the sweepers on. It didn't look. It didn't look. It looked both wide and heavy originally. And instead, it turns out to chip the guard up front, proving that I can't see. And we now have split guards: one red over here on the right, one yellow over on the left. Excellent tech of the center guard, despite the fact that the team that threw it probably didn't want it, and yeah. the team that through the tick really didn't want the corners. Exactly. But hey, here we are. We've got these corner guards. We are. It is what it is. And don't worry, I do actually have a pick, I have an appointment with my optometrist sometime next week. So I might actually be able to see things soon. I'm sure the rest of my curling team appreciate that. I mean, as a skip, you really only need to make out colors and motions and things like that. You're, you're not reading the stones, literally. Sure. Like. Yeah, right. Uh, Erica was Erica uh, Smith Schuert was asked to draw in behind what was now their red guard. Instead, she put up a very tall red guard. I'm wondering if this ice is slowing down even more. I did have a skip once who actually was blind in one eye and didn't tell me that until after the first game we had played together. That must make the whole depth reception thing a little challenging. Gian Grosby throwing his. First, first seconds. Stone. This looks really heavy. This does look really heavy. It's also way wide of what was the broom line to get behind the guards. It's coming around behind okay. It's and just actually, be it's about slowing down oh. okay. It's back eight oh, and it's that. half buried. So they know something we don't know. Which the list of that, the list of what I don't know is long and not actually all that distinguished. Well, again, I'll just chalk that up again to why you call weight while sweeping and not from the house. Because, exactly. Cause and certainly not from the opposite end of the ice as yeah. to where it's being thrown. So Gian Garaspi, nope, I'm sorry, I'll take that back. Andrew Schubert being asked to throw his first stone. Basically, it looked like they basically called to sit on the stone that Fallon had just had um, Gian throw. And it's going to get pretty it's close. Get, it's no, coming it's in the actually going to just barely no. touch the top okay, of the house. I, okay. I cannot Reason number 17 why you don't call weight behind the glass. Yeah, I can't read weight on the camera. Like, that got to the top of the house. It looked like they were going to keep dragging it. And they just set it down right there in yeah. the foyer. So, Gian is being asked. What is he being asked to do? Is he clearing the red? Kind of looks like it. Could just be another draw. Now that is wide of the broom, whatever it was. Very wide of the broom. I think he was. I think the original intent was to. I don't know. I don't know. And I think it doesn't matter. I think it's through. And I think we carry on. All right. Chris Brahas, second Andrew Schubert, being asked to do a little tap dance. Tap their red on the center line that's currently just biting the top of the 12 and put it on the hat, put it on the button. And Rochester might have forgotten to eat their Wheaties. I don't think they actually had Wheaties for, for breakfast today at the, at the uh, yeah. breakfast spot uh, for the Bronx Field. 
So uh, I think we had more sausage and eggs and all that kind of thing. So that might have been why they didn't eat the Wheaties that we're going to have. Um, the line looks about right, but I think this is crazy light for a tap. I mean, it'll tap, but it won't do anything once it's tapped. Okay, so now they have the two biting on the top of the 12. Although I think Jimmy is, nope, Jimmy's not saying get rid of those. Jimmy's saying use those. Come in behind to his vice, Emily. And by the way, we are still in the sixth over on sheet A, tied at four after five. Sweeper's hard out of the hand. Looks like we're not gonna get around the red stones there. Looks like we're not gonna get to the red stones. There. Looks like we're gonna guard the red stones. Which is also not bad. No. Makes the promote, takes promote options out. Or at least it makes it a lot harder. That might have actually even been the call. I didn't see. No. I saw where the, the broom call. was, but it, oh, okay. That wasn't the call. Okay, Chris. Well, if it had been, it would have been a pretty good call. Sure. Chris asking Erica Smith Schubert to come around. This is not a recording. It will be in a couple hours, but right now it's not. Stone is on its way. The uh, vice Erica kind of gets up and kind of turns away, feeling and looking like she's a little bit unhappy with the shot. Not really sure why, because it seems Cause like it's, it's not it's bad. Deep. It's so it is a little deep though. Just so it is a little deep. So it becomes it is the second stone, and Jimmy Fallon asking Erica to guard up. Makes sense. He's got a buried stone that's currently sitting shot. He's looking to steal to go up three. Guard up makes perfectly good sense. Sweepers are on it hard. Now they're now they get yeah, called they off. Yeah, kind of want to let this curl. I think. Uh, I think they were concerned. I think he was concerned it was too short. It's not now. It is maybe a little deeper than they wanted it, but not in a bad spot by any stretch of the imagination. It's basically full twelve. This on the nose. All right, so Chris Barajas is saying, enough with this wussy sissy draw stuff. Give me a nice womanly hit. Pop this on the nose, raise it through, take out the red. He would actually be sitting two if he managed to pull this off. It's a very narrow port, so the shot's gonna have to be incredibly precise. He's getting the sweepers on it immediately. I think he's inside. Oh yeah, he's inside. This is gonna be on the yellow. So the yellow is going to go into the other red, to a red, into a yellow. That red spins to nothing. That yellow is out of play. Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon now lying too. Now lying too. Yeah. Jimmy Fallon now lying too. One of them very inaccessible behind cup behind three guards. The other one's pretty exposed, and they yeah. can actually use that yellow to get to the other yellow. So Jimmy's, no, he's not. Or is he calling, or is this an ice call? Is that an I want to put my stone there, or is that an ice call? I think that's an ice call. Pretty sure okay. he's just got a guard, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, I hope that that's just an ice call, yeah. and he's going to throw a guard. Okay. <laughs> Sneaking up on 11 o'clock at night, my common sense is going out the window. See, we haven't all just simultaneously lost our comprehension of this game, have we? <laughs> it's entirely possible. Stranger things have happened to me today. So he, Jimmy's looking to throw his first stone up as a guard, guarding his two. If he gets that guard or two, that puts him, or that steal of two, this end up in a really, really strong position. But honestly, this stone's a little narrow. And it's, uh, no, it's not going to guard. It's going to cross in and 
Oh, I mean, it's kind of guard, but what it's guarding is it's guarding the promote of the stone that would have to hit the stone to hit the stone to hit the stone to possibly hit the stone. So, in other words, it didn't really accomplish anything. No, just uh, couldn't tell if he was inside the room or not. I'm going to guess he that he probably was a bit. He was. Uh, and also probably maybe just not enough ice. But yeah. Maybe he was just that wa that narrow. So, Chris Barajas has a shot to get out of this end with his first, first? Yep. First. No, his second. What? Yeah, okay, never mind. So yeah, I, mi I, missed yeah. the, I missed that his front end had, had set a stone. Okay, with his first stone of the end, he actually has a chance to hit that yellow stone that's in the top eight. And if he gets the angle just right, he could double out the one in the back eight. Um, the danger being he could also take out his red in the back, and if he knows it, Fallon is still sitting too. Stone's on its way down. It's gonna. He's got the yellow. He's got the yellow, but I think he's got it on the inside of the nose. It does clear through. All the way, no, not all the way out of play. Another one of those hanger-ons on the back line. Again, you know, on the overhead, you really can only see the shadow of it, but it's enough. So there are, two, there are, there's actually a decent number of people hanging out in the warm room. It's probably about 20 or 20, 20, 25 folks sitting around the tables right now chatting as the two games are going on. Not a whole heck of a lot of attention being paid to the two games, I will say that. But, you know, that's okay. All right. Where's the weight? Jimmy Fallon throwing his final stone of the end in an attempt to guard up his one. This is, he kind of actually wants to kind of put this about where he is. Guard the, guard yeah, against the tap. That's, yeah, that's, that's yeah. a pretty decent so that, spot. That it's makes it so that red's not tappable. Get that yellow out and oh baby. That is a true statement. If he gets the yellow out somehow, he could sit four or maybe even five. But uh, to be honest with you, Dorothy, uh, getting that yellow out would require um, earth moving equipment at this point, basically. Um, Some sort of... Uh, quantum mechanical thing to happen here. So there a is a rock raise, to pass through another rock. There is a raise on this red over here on the right. That's got a straight path in. Um, so the rock that was just guarded, the one that's sort of top eight, there's probably a way to promote that to shot, but not really a way to not run the yellow out with it. All right, so what's he calling? Hey, it looks like he's just calling a draw line. Draw line to try to get the four to take his one yeah. and be down There's one without four. hammer coming home. It would be appropriate to be to get one because that's how these things go. Shots in the way. Somebody's getting one. Either Jimmy's getting one or Barajas is getting one. Stone's on its way. Sweepers are on it just for insurance, I think. Oh, it's just oh, going it it to dig in Rex at the end. That yeah, topple. that was right. the rock to raise, but it just didn't get didn't yeah. have the speed. Jimmy Fallon takes one, another steal, his uh, second consecutive steal, and through a very, very, very painfully slow process of accumulation, is up five to two after seven. So uh, Chris Barajas Here's needs all the to break this pattern of only getting ones or his tournament is over. Down three, does have the hammer, so that's an asset. Um, surprisingly, at least to me, Jimmy Fallon calling for this stone to be put in play in the house, however, in the side eight. Up three, I don't think I'd be doing this. Um, I, I think you're yep. correct right. that there's no reason to even leave this in play. Um, right. I've personally, and especially at the 500 level, you can kind of get burned. You start throwing rocks through, and 
then you're out of rocks with, to do anything with. Yeah. Um, so I think calling for in the house was fine. What he got was not in the house. No, so that, that, that is guard. not particularly yeah. good. No. Ooh, a nice thread of a very narrow port by um, the red uh, Iceman, never, never being blamed for hitting the port, um, to put himself in a situation where he's sitting shot um, as we're coming to the end of the seventh end, the sixth end, rather, I'm sorry. They're curling real slow over here on sheet A. Uh, they're basically an end behind, actually more than an end behind, an end in four stones behind. Oh, red. Barajas the fails hogs to cross the, guard. The, cross the hog line. That's going to hurt the campaign to get, yeah. a, get a three here get a in three. the eighth. That makes it a lot harder. Fallon saying, okay, you know what? I got a corner guard. I'm going to use it. Let me come in. Make uh, make uh, Brahas's university has to get that three in. There's that much smaller. Yeah, the other option could have been the peel of shame, but if he was calling for the draw to begin with, he's not right. strictly trying to just clear the whole sheet. So exactly. this does line up with the same plan. So Ingles got has his hammer. The game is currently tied it in the six. Pretty good weight, but it's not going to bury. No. It's, it's a top 12. Ingles is throwing his hammer in the sixth, trying to get a takeout of that one red stone to possibly, to, to, to probably end up two. Did he get past the, got to pass the guard, makes contact with the stone. Stone does, however, jam, and I think rolls in and remains shot. They're checking it, They're checking it closely. Are they checking it twice? Uh, yes, I'm not sure who's naughty. I'm not sure who's nice. Checking it thrice, in fact. Ooh. I'm not Actually, sure what comes after thrice. So they're, I going think, for I think a they they're going for a quaternary check now. Um, and in fact, a pentiary check. I think if you've checked this many times, the answer is measure. Uh, yeah, um, grab this. And they kicked, okay. They came to a conclusion. What so exactly is that conclusion So something is? they didn't see on the first four looks was apparent on the fifth look. Why, what exactly that is, we'll know when we find out which team is uh, putting a stone in the uh, act to throw. And the answer to that is red. So never blame the Iceman, must have gotten the one. After the, six. Yeah, so here on the featured sheet, uh, Barajas throws a draw into the house, but it goes deep into the back eight. And then Fallon answers with a takeout on it. Right. Wow. They had while they were doing that measure we, or that consideration, we had time for we had two shots. Two shots. Yes. Wow. Well, that's um, why we're an end ahead over here. Over on sheet A, that does mean that Never Blame the Iceman is ahead after six, yep. five, four. Yes, boy. And we'll come back to that game in progress after this one is over, because that's this how this is going to go. Yeah. So honestly, these guys could throw an extra end if they had to and still be ahead. Ooh, was that my out loud voice? I'm sorry. Hey, Alan, why are there only two games in late draw tonight? Because that's how the bracket worked out. Um, there were only 23 teams in this bond spiel, and so rather than make the teams that were going to be, a couple of the teams that were going to be playing at nine go back to back, um, they ended up, they've, they've got a full sheet of four games at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Right, so the A, only yeah. two now. Yeah, the A event semifinals were at 6.30. Um, right, and these are the B semis These are the B semis, right and the C and D semis are tomorrow morning. Right, so there are only two, basically because there are only two games left on the draw to shove in this draw, Catherine, that's why. So, and it's okay, you didn't spell my name that wrong. You just doubled an L, no big deal. It's all good. So we're here in the eighth. Um, Jimmy Fallon making it his mission to prevent Barajas from Rochester uh, scoring three. And right now, Jimmy's doing an exceptionally good yeah, job. Say, of which it. he's done all he's game. Doing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nobody scored a three. And um, he's actually prevented them from scoring three total this yeah, far. Yeah, good point. Rochester is starting to run out of stones here. They actually, after that stone, which just barely made it into the team, made it into the 12. That's their fourth stone at the end. They've only got four stones remaining, and they need to get three points out of this. It's starting to look, it's starting to look desperate for them, frankly. But 
not by no means impossible because truthfully just 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 a hit and a raised takeout and they're in they're in good shape and they actually do have the hammer so they're not out of this end by any stretch of the imagination We are throwing back in stones now. Yeah. Erica Smith Schubert with her first stone. This is Emily English for Team Fallon, actually. I'm sorry, you're right. Still her first spice stone. And Jimmy's asking her to get rid of one, and, and she did exactly she that. She has done that. Strong work. Chris Brahas asking Erica Smith Schubert, I got it right this time, enough to get it in. Asking her to throw to the top four foot behind the uh, two guards up at the top. Stones on its way. Chris Brahas immediately has the sweepers get on for line, and I can't blame them because that has just flipped, and it's gonna it's gonna get in. Oh, it might touch the yellow. No, it's not going to get that far. It's not going to get that far? Okay. It might even hog. Nope. Okay. Ball on, girl. Let it girl. So, Jimmy Fallon calling for his vice, Emily, yes. to throw a guard up to kind of take out the promote possibility on that other red. Yeah. And honestly, I'm not sure I would, I'm not sure I would have just taken it out. Because I think if he gets one more takeout, I think. Oh no, they still got three over there on the red side. Never mind. I was gonna say I thought I think they were getting ready to get the last stone of the game out, but Emily English's stone coming in to essentially a freeze, not quite, too much short. That's okay. On that red stone guarding the top of the twelve, it actually might technically be biting, but right now it's number three shot if it is. So, Erica Smith Schubert throwing her last shot of this eighth end. She's again being asked to draw in. A guard, a guard, my kick it for a guard. Yep, yep. She's definitely thrown it harder. Right now, the sweepers are working it hard to make sure it gets clear of the guard. I think it's clear. It's definitely clear. It's well clear. It's definitely clear. It's and rolling actually into right the now, four yep, foot right now it is, and Right now that is the shot stone. It's a fairly nice draw. It's under a lot of cover. Yeah. It's actually it could be, be followed far. down, but that's about all that really could be done with it. Yeah, right. pretty much. So at this point, however, Team Barajas is in a situation. They've got one stone shooting. They've got two more stones to throw. They've got to get three. So they have to make two more points out of their last two stones they do. and hope that Fallon doesn't get any of those three stones out of play. And he's going to start trying right now. Yep. Oh, maybe not. Maybe he's just going to go for that freeze. Yeah. And the freeze is actually it's a good shot. Oh, I mean, I, I think it's a way higher percentage than trying to come around takeout. Yeah. Um, Okay, he's actually just talking about a guard. I heard him on the ambient mic say anything from a three guard down. Okay, well, I mean, he probably wants to freeze to it, yeah. but if he's short, that's okay. He's fine just blocking that port yeah. so they can't keep throwing that shot. Exactly, and he's right. I mean, line that's line. the game, right? Yes, line. Yes, line. Uh, I think this is inside the line. He's also going to have a hard time making the hog, I think. Yeah, he, he was just so light. That's why it took yeah. scrolling so hard. It's okay, just he would have been okay with a three guard, but he threw a negative two guard, which is a problem. Uh, that leaves the line open for Chris Barajas to dump another one in, which is basically all he's got. He's got to basically, he, he's got to basically throw two more through this port, get him into the forefoot, and hope that Jimmy Fallon doesn't get a hit on any of them. Yeah. That's all he's got, really. Yeah. I mean, you can use that top yellow to get under the cover a bit better, but the back yellow is the one that's shot. Well, it's second shot at the second moment. Second shot. So he's getting ready to throw his first stone of the eighth end. He's 
on its way. Sweepers get on it immediately. Oh, they're kind of dragging it out. I hope that's what they were going for. Uh, this is very short. It's a, it was a weight problem. This is very short. This is not even going to make the house. Or is it? It might. Yeah, but oh, picks the guard, oh, oh. blocks his own hole. Um, he's looking at the situation. Honestly, I think he just lost the game, really. He's looking at his vice saying, do you see any way that we can make a three out of this? And I think he's right. I think, I think With right. only one more stone, I don't see it. I, I see two shots that can get him three, but he only has one. Um, like I see if he had two shots, he could make two different shots. So well, him. okay, he's got a shot that could, well, no, he doesn't. Never mind. That, because of that yellow in the back and forth. Yeah, this game yeah. is over. They just don't quite recognize it yet. Or they may just be throwing the two rocks here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. It's over. So basically, yellow into red to button would get him a second shot, Dorothy. Unfortunately, he needs three. So, yeah, two doesn't, two doesn't help. He needs three. And uh, Fallon misses that guard, but it's pretty academic. Oh, there's that high guard up there anyway. I was going to say, there's the double on the right, but that's not there because of that really high guard just over the hog line. It's not on the camera. Yeah. So I think he's trying to figure out if he's got any sort of circus shot. And that, I mean, there's not even two in well, the house to know, work with. That, well, no, but what he could do, and this would be this would be the circus shot to end all circus shots. If he ticks the red that he's got with maybe it's high weight, ticks the red that he's got sitting up in front of the port such that it catches a corner of his red that's just at top of the house with enough force to shake. To to concede. Okay. <laughs> I think he was like, yeah, if I do this and then a nuclear bomb goes off and uh, the gopher opens up a hole and no, he concedes. So the team left to throw was sitting one, so officially that end does score. Correct. That end does score and it officially scores one, making our final score. Making our score. 5-3. Five, 5-3. Three. Five, three. <laughs> Everybody gets ones. Everybody gets ones. It's Valentine's weekend and we just brought you a whole game of whole singles. A whole game of singles. Was singles. <laughs> really? Okay, so that That's is unfortunately was, right? the end of the tournament for Chris Brahas, Erica Smith-Schubert, Andrew Schubert, and Ashley Topley. Thank you for joining us from Rochester. You're done. And the Fallon team from the Potomac Curling Club, Hillary Sparks, Gene Grosby, Emily English, and Jimmy Fallon will be seen on Sheet C at noon tomorrow after some bagpipes and some drinking. So what we're left with is the game currently wrapping up the seventh end because they're slow. Over here on sheet A, Naver Blame the Iceman, Michelle Schaefer, Ian Schaefer, Leslie Gray, Dave Schmel is the skip there from the Bucks County Curling Club against the Ingalls Reign from Potomac. Stacey Tetsko, Craig Marquardt, Judy Rakusen, and Andy Inglis. They are in the seventh end. It is currently 5-4 in favor of the Never Blame the Iceman rink from Bucks County. And we are currently on the first yellow skips stone. So they have three stones remaining in this end. And as I said, red, which is yeah, red, which is never blame the Iceman, is up five four. Currently, the situation is on the, in the house is a little questionable because they're at the far end. I'm not sure, so I'm going to see if I can adjust the TV set. All right. Okay, we're back live. Okay. So over here on sheet A, 
As I said, um, Ingles is sitting, he's sitting shot. There is a um, Iceman stone in the top eight. And there is a guard on the center line in front of both of those. It's a very high guard, it's just barely inside the hog. Um, there are also a couple of guards over here on the left side of the sheet. A cluster of stones, a scattering of them over on the right side of the sheet. Basically right now, yellow is lying one, red's lying two, yellow is lying three, four, possibly five. Red's got a stone that might be five, might be six. Um, so the situation is, as we say in this world, fluid. Fluid. As Andy Inglis comes down to throw his first skips stone of this seventh end. And judging from the broom position. There we go. Judging from the broom position, I'm not 100% sure what they're doing, to be honest with you. Updated the scoreboard on the screen to match this game now. Five to four in the seventh with yellow having the current hammer. Correct, and Iceman, never blame the Iceman, is red. Yes. Yeah. So the scoreboard is accurate. Yes. Eagles throwing his first stone. Looks like it's at kind of chip weight. I think he might be looking to chip the red that's in front of his yellow out of the way to eliminate any possible raises. Kind of chipped his over, pip, picked that red out. Okay, so now red is definitely shot. I'm sorry, yellow is definitely shot. Red is definitely two. Three, four, five, and six all belong to yellow. Uh, Jeremy Vanderhooten is saying the camera moved a little bit too far. Can you back it up a little bit to the left? I don't quite know what he means by that, though. Uh, uh, no, we can't actually point the cameras anywhere other than where they're pointed, but I did miss a couple of cuts on a shot, so that okay. might have been what you were talking about there. Okay. I don't know. I'm just, um, reading, I'm just reading the commentary. Yeah, no, the cameras are mounted over B, and so pointing at where they are now, what you're seeing live now is the house that they're throwing into. Um. All right, so never blame the Iceman's getting ready to throw his last stone of this seventh end. Um, and right now he's in a situation where he's kind of okay with giving up that one. It would tie up the game, he'd have hammer in the eighth. Nothing wrong with that. But he wants to make sure that his red doesn't get picked out of there and a uh, game-blowing um, big end gets hit. So Dave Schmel, who if you were here six hours ago, we had on the uh, draw eight feature sheet as he qualified to reach his make this game. Is just kind of looking to, I think he's looking to, not actually sure what he's looking to do. Possibly sit on that red, and, uh, that, on that yellow in the back of the house to prevent um, Andy Inglis from getting more than two. Uh, okay, That's I think I see maybe what Jeremy meant, because from this view, when I'm trying to look at the hack that they're throwing out of, the camera is a little off center, ah, but I okay. think that's just because that's just as far as it'll go. Right, okay, that makes sense. Um, it's just because of where that one's mounted, it just right. doesn't get a good view of that it could be entertaining for you in the eighth end, but we'll do what we can do. Uh, I've also lost all the color on the overhead, so if I cut to that, you probably won't be able to tell the stones apart. But All right, Dave Schmel's stone is away. Like I said, I think he's just kind of trying to make sure that his red doesn't get picked out. He could be also trying to outdraw to the button. That would be an interesting idea. It's too deep for that, and actually it's too deep for everything. It's just going right through. Well, it does make so that the five is out of the question because I think he's cutting at least two of the yellow stones out. A four is still very much a possibility. 
if Andy could pick out that redstone. I don't think he can, though, to be honest with you, because it is behind guard, and I think it's I don't I, I think it's safe. So I think Andy's just gonna look for a draw line. Just gonna well, I don't know. He and his vice are taking a serious look at it. We'll cut here to the Noir house cam where we <laughs> can see that White is sitting one and the Blackstone <laughs> is second shot. I feel like we should be uh, putting on trench coats and, uh, you know, etc. So, all right, Andy is in the house. Explaining a shot to the front end. He's just drawing. So he's just drawing to try to get a get a get a get a touch of the forefoot to get his two, which would put him up one coming home. Um, I think I'd personally, I think I'd curl. For, I'd come at it from the other side, and that's what his front end is advising him, and that's what he's telling his vice now. And the Peanut gallery also in the glass is pointing at a certain <laughs> shot too. Uh, um, yeah, it's so basically everybody who's actually paying attention, which there's there aren't many of those people to, to be honest, um, talked him into coming from the other way, which is a much better shot to be honest with you. So probably the right decision. Annie Inglis getting ready, throw his shot in the seventh. Pretty much got one clinch, so the game's certainly at least going to be tied coming home. This is so that he could be have a one-point lead. This is not going to have the hammer. Sweepers got on it real fast. It's a question of both weight and line. Weight only now. They're dragging it in. They're dragging it in. I think they may have overswept. Nope. Just fine, nice draw to the back of the forefoot. Nice draw for two. So we're gonna be coming home in the eighth end. Andy Inglis from the Potomac Curling Club. Ingles, Ingles, Ingles. Up six to five, coming home in the eighth. Dave Schmel down one, but with the hammer. So here we are starting the eighth end. Uh, Potomac Ingalls team lead Stacy Tetsko no, 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 no. getting ready to <laughs> Catherine. Catherine would like to know what's up with the retro black and white film noir going on here. We just thought we'd be a little artistic. You know, it's Academy Awards season and, you know. Um, it's, yeah, we'll go with that and not just that the color is just washed out on that one particular camera. Yeah, sure. And it's only actually when it goes through our feed, because on the TVs in the war room, it's not washed out. It's just Interesting. But it's only the back house, because if I flip here to the near house, we actually do get full living, breathing color. Okay, well, that's good, because the near house is what matters right now. So a center guard was put up with the first stone by Stacy Tetsko. Now Michelle Schaefer from Bucks County, Never Blame the Iceman, is being asked to do a corner guard. Basically, it appears that they're both um, I think the they're call, both I think the playing primary out of call the actually was book. draw, um, because I think I heard him say, if it's a corner, it's OK. OK. Well, it might be heavy, might be through. Certainly not a corner back. guard. And it is all the way, is it out of play? It's out of play, okay. Yep, it is not back there anymore. So Andy Inglis played right out of the book, drawing in. Behind the center guard. Pretty much playing to make sure that uh, Dave Schmel only gets a one here to play nine. Or if he could steal or get the, get the end blanked, that's a win for him. Trying to basically trying to play, make sure we play small ball. Okay, this stone is deep. It's behind the tee, but it is gonna stick around in the back 12 
fully in the back 12, in fact. Well, no, half out. But Inglis currently sitting one as we're getting ready to throw um, Shell Schaefer's second and final lead stone. And we could use Hershey's syrup to make it look like the rocks are bleeding, Melvin, but don't you think the ace crew has already had enough stuff to deal with this season? Shell Schaefer's second stone is on the way. Sweeper's got on it immediately. They're calling a two, I believe, is what I heard. Did I say Stacy Nabisco? Close enough. Not. Stacy Tetsko. They have cookies on the brain, what can I say? <laughs> Puts up a two guard. Andy asking Craig Marquardt, or Craig Nabisco, to uh, put a stone in the forefoot behind the guard on the center line. Seems kind of heavy, but it is on the outside where things do kind of tend to slow down all of a sudden. It is slowing down. Yeah, it's not really going to curl in, but it is going to stop in the house. But it is going to stop in the house. Back eight. Okay. Yep, back eight weight, fully in the back eight. Now lying two, and more importantly, cutting down the range that Dave Schmell would be able to use to get his two, or one, or whatever. as Iceman second, Ian Schaefer. Getting ready to throw his first stone. He's being asked to draw in. I agree, Courtney. It's really, the, the, the national final was really kinda, yeah. Um, and oh, that shot promotes the center guard into the back eight. So Andy now doesn't have any guards to hide behind, but he does have three in the house. There are two red guards for Iceman up front. And Andy is calling for Craig Marquardt to put up a guard, I believe, in the, in the, in the middle. But hey, Courtney, John is at least still going to Worlds. He's got that going for him, which is nice, right? And his shot's well past the guard. Looks like it's going to not. Eh, it's just in front of the tee. Probably a quarter buried, three quarters exposed on the outside. Uh, Andy Inglis lies four after throwing four stones. Um, you know, I guess that's one way to, s to not let the opponent get any points is just throw all eight, throw in, the eight, eight in the house. Yeah. I was thinking that maybe he maybe should have went for peeling these guards, but now we see uh, Schmel is going to peel a guard, it looks like. So. Which seems like a... Well, no, I mean, Schmel's only got to play for one. He's only playing, yeah, he's playing for one, and he's got backing now. Yeah, he'd so love to have two. He'd fine. love to get two, don't get me wrong, but he's playing to make sure he has a shot for one. So and this looks like it's going to be a successful peel. At least the hit part's going to happen. One stone's out. The other stone. The shooter actually I'll goes shooter in, spins but out. back out. No, they're, out both, they're both out. So now Andy asking for Judy Rakusen, Rakusen to put up a guard on the center. Probably actually just to my left, your right, as you look at the house. Up the center line. We're down to the final eight stones at this eighth end. In this, the last game of the evening. It's coming down. It's going to be a two or three guard. 
just oh, it just doesn't, doesn't curl get enough. off the center yeah, line. Yeah, they that even had the one sweeper on it to try to push it off the line, and it just yeah, didn't move. Yeah, just didn't come off the center line. So David Schmel is asking Leslie Gray for a hit and roll behind cover. Okay, Skip's original, uh, nice thing about there only being one game, we can pick yeah. up their voices on the uh, overhead pretty well, particularly given that Dave's voice is one of those ones that cuts through, cuts through flutter pretty good. He said way wide from the get-go, and it tips the top one into the button, and that red stone spins out. Oh, yeah, the yellow guard that didn't really guard anything is now guarding, is the, now shot guarding the shot stone. And yellow is sitting two, one, two. Red has the third stone. Yellow has the fourth and fifth stone. Uh, Judy Recusen being asked to guard up again. This looks a little hefty for a guard, in my opinion. I thought she was actually going to take out the red, but it's not enough for a takeout. No. I think they wanted to just kind of come in and do some guard action. Well, they're going to get some guard action. This is over the They've hog line. They've got some guard action. It's over the hog line. It's in a guard guards. position. I think there's still plenty of a port to get to the stone in the center, which is exactly what um, Dave Schmel is asking for Leslie Gray to accomplish. He wants to hit. He wants to hit and basically sit on the button. Well, who doesn't? Well, true. Past the guard, through the port. He's got the yellow. Is he going to get the roll to the inside? No, he basically gets the nose. But you know what he does do? Sets up a wall behind. So takeouts, takeouts are now officially treacherous. Officially treacherous. I have so declared. Yeah, the some of the jams not as bad if they can hit this to the shooter's right. And it goes, even if it jams on the left, it might still be far enough that it's not shot anymore. Because uh, obviously Andy doesn't need really any of his rocks to score, but certainly not all of them. Right. Just a hair, less than a smidge. Oops. There we go. So got to get in. Got to get in through the port. Now they got a sweeper on it, so presumably they think they're past the outer guard. And they're wrong. It's got to kiss. Hit that one there. Basically do a lot of damage to the wall, but that's actually kind of a good thing, doing the damage to the wall, because that actually opens up some ports for some takeouts later. So we're starting to get down to the nitty gritty. Yep. Dave Schmel getting ready to throw his first skips stone. We have three stones remaining in this end. Not necessarily in this game because a tie is very much in the very much in play here. Basically, what they're looking to do is, of course, in the event of a tie, both teams would advance, and we'd have a three-team B event final. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not how that works. Oh, okay. Oh, right now here it says on my notes that it's an extra end. Right. Yeah, that 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 that's a lot more likely. I don't know how you do three team three team curling. That would be. Um, I did have a curling video game on my Xbox that did allow you to have three and four team games of curling. Um, you just have four different colored stones, and if you could have eventually like 30 rocks in play, and it was rather awkward. Ew. But yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, Catherine. It's possible. Bonus curling is in the cards. There could be an extra end. 
There's a limit of one extra end, though. So if the extra end is blanked, it goes to a skip's draw. Um, and in our last draw, we actually had our featured game go to an extra end, and they still finished before the game on Shide. Yeah. Shide has been the slow sheet all day, and this game is no exception. So he's looking like he's just trying to draw in to kind of freeze on his stone that's already sitting shot. He's got to get through the port. Just through the port. Sweeping it hard. Does not get to wear that second stone, despite the yelling and jumping. Um, <laughs> sits one. And actually, that one is getting better and better better and better protected as time goes on. Yeah, Andy doesn't really have a shot for the steal anymore, but he can try to make it so that that uh, Dave can't get more than one and they have to play the extra. Yeah, and he'd have the hammer in the he extra. He would have so the hammer in the extra. Really it's not, yeah. not a terrible outcome for him. Not the end of the, yeah, it's not the end of the world. But what he's got to guard against is leaving a situation where that second is possible. Yeah, and if he goes after shot, he has a chance of wrecking on that new yeah. one and promoting it for two. So he has to be pretty cautious. It looks like he's thinking about it, though. No one does. Is he trying to chip this out, pick this out? Is he trying to pick this out, or is he just trying to put something up to make it so that there's no opposing draw for the two? Yeah, putting something between the reds, if possible, would be a great spot. Yeah. Because then he'd guarantee that he's going to be second shot. Right. Let's cut to the throwing end here. There we go. So there, he's lining it up. Ingles throwing his final stone at this eighth end. He's got some mustard. That's that's harder than a draw, that's for sure. Yeah, he's Put it, they're putting a sweeper on it, so they're around. sure they're past the guard. They're putting a sweeper on it. Has he got the pick? I think he's got it. I think he's got contact. He's got contact, but all it did was move it over. Um, and, it, and he actually just opened up a draw line. There is an open draw. And all Dave Schmel has to do to win this game is put a draw, touch the forefoot. He doesn't even actually have to touch the forefoot. He can be a couple inches short and be there. And actually, he's looking at the possibility of drawing to the nose of a yellow that's in the back eight. He's wondering if that if he'd be shot after he did that. And it's an open question. He might be. Okay, he's got, he's got his options figured out. The line that he's calling is, looks like he's just calling for the pure draw. He's not calling for a hit and roll in or anything like that. He's just calling for a pure draw. Dave Schmel sitting in the hack, getting ready to throw. He's at his one, so he's guaranteed an extra end. It's basically a question of whether he's going to end the game here or if he's going to have to throw the eighth. It's coming down. No sweepers on it yet. Okay. Emphatic don't saying, touch it. Don't touch. Now, and now they start touching it, so I don't know. Um, no! Oh, clean through the clean hole. Clean through everything, yeah. Wow. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. We have bonus curling, ladies and gentlemen. One red. One red. Ends. The game is tied after eight. And they shove, yep, they're going to shove the stones down to throw a ninth. Um, I hope for Dave Schmel's sake that he gets up before the stones go through him. He's still sitting there, head hung, feeling very, very, very despondent about that shot. So welcome to Saturday Night Bonus Curling here at the Potomac Curling Club. 
And there is an outside shot, depending on how long this end takes, that we, will we be could playing actually on Sunday. have Sunday morning curling. Well, one of these teams is playing on Sunday regardless. True statement. If this end goes more than about 18 minutes or so, they will technically both be playing on exactly. Sunday. Exactly. And as we know, the goal in every single 5 and under bond spiel is to make it to Sunday. The goal in any bond spiel is to Pretty make much. it to Sunday. Unless it's like, you know, one of those week-long ones where you, everyone plays on Sunday. But. Yeah, true. And, yep, they just hung their fifth one of the game. So Dave Schmel actually was apparently studying from the uh, Sheet B playbook and believes that ones were a perfect solution to all of, her, for all of his problems. Well, he did get a lot of them. So. Actually, that's not true. He got two in the first end. Oh, yeah, actually. look at that. Yeah, You're right. Yeah, the, hammer, the, the hammer was kind of... He got a two in the first end. Uh, Ingles got a three in the second to go up three to two. Then Iceman got a one in the third. Then the Ingles one got a one in the fourth, the one, one in the fifth, one in the sixth, two in the seventh, one in the eighth. And that all adds up to six, six. And curling via the ninth end. And, you know, Courtney and Melvin, they make marriage counselors for that sort of thing. Just saying. Um, so center guard just off the line, up in the two uh, range. Stacy Nabisco, Tetsko, actually, if you insist on actually giving people the proper names. Andy actually so asked her to come behind him, which is, a, which is an okay decision for the attempt to get one. But he's going to pick guards, and we now have a guard split up front. Oh, oops, I didn't change the hammer. Yellow does have the hammer here, not red. Uh, correct statement. Yellow has the hammer. Guard. Guard well, you know, Would that be the cat he's eating, Courtney? Because that'd be weird. Who ate a cat? Melvin did earlier in the game. Which oh. Oh, I thought maybe Alf was in our chat. No. Melvin apparently ate a cat earlier in the conversation. Oh. Because because Saturday night curling. <laughs> Possibly soon Sunday morning curling. All right, so Michelle Schaefer throwing her second stone, which is definitely her last stone of the game, unless they choose her to throw the skip draw, I guess. Um, they're sweeping it hard. Unless they blank the extra end. In which case they go to a skip draw. Oh, that's right. They would still go to a skip draw, right? This does not quite make the house. It's a second guard. Dave Schmel looking like he's sweating. And honestly, this is the first time all day I've seen him sweat. Man has not been sweating all day. No, and we did see in the in the draw number eight, uh, two draws ago, he, he was very calm and collected throughout the whole game. He just yeah. had a good attitude the whole time. Yeah, yeah. Um, looks like, and actually, he, he 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 just smiled and giggled at us. So oh yeah, he's 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 having fun with it. He's a, I mean, I've I can't remember if I've actually ever played with him, but I've been at a lot of spiels with him, and he's a, just a great guy to hang out with. Right, and Stacy Tetsko's second stone sets up a fourth guard up front. So many guards. So apparently we're playing. We're we're, we're going to play it this way. So many guards. If they're if they're practicing for their draw the button as a tiebreaker, they're not doing. They're very not well. doing well at all. No. I I apologize for your inability to sweat, Courtney. I I I got nothing. I'm sorry. Um, so never blame the Iceman. Second, Ian Schaefer. Getting ready to throw. He's apparently being asked. I think he's actually being asked to clear something out. I don't think it's a draw line because that line wasn't good for a draw. I think he was being asked to yep, ta either tap, actually tap the center line in, I think. It's got the weight for or the tap. Or possibly tap the outside in. Tapping the outside one into the house, but it actually tapped outside, so it could be in off um, where Andy. Andy uh, Ingles could come in off of that and roll into the button behind cover. Yeah, he did run it back to about the T line, but yeah. just he knocked it from out from under the cover. Yes, you're absolutely right, Nick. Too many guards. 
this is this is going to be this is going to make for an ugly end to this end, and probably some long decisions. So an outside shot at Sunday morning curling. Something about the extra, you go into it and you go, okay, it's just a normal end. We just have to try to get one, but, then but it some, never works out. Something that way. just turns upside down. Yeah, and everything just goes all wacky. Okay, so this is looking like uh, Craig Marquardt was being asked to just get rid of some of the detritus up front. Oh, good, great work. Detritus. And is it though? And he does so. He peels off the top guard. So that removes some of the granite up front. I'm not really sure he really wanted to remove one of his stones. But the peel does take something out. We now only have three stones in front instead of four. And Dave Schmel asking Ian to do a tap-up. Courtney's doubting anyone could throw enough weight to make a multiple peel on that slow ice. I probably could, Courtney, with the stick, but I wouldn't be able to get it online. So, you know, there is that. I'm not sure what's going on over here on the edge of the sheet. Andy's having someone bring him a glove. Okay? Apparently his hands are cold. There's only 29 degrees out there. Which is quite warm compared to outside. Yeah. Ian Schaefer asked, yeah! being asked to do a tap up. Looks like he could have it here. He's got the tap. Oh, and he actually split it to behind cover. Okay, so now he's now Dave Schmel has two in the house. Both in front of the tee, one half eight, half 12, one pretty much full 12 foot in the front behind the cover. And Andy Inglis asking Craig Marquardt to run back the remaining yellow guard. Craig coming with some heat. Is it gonna get back to this? Is it gonna get back enough? I think he's outside of it. I don't think this is gonna get there. No, actually it does, if he's got enough on it to get it out of play, it does, yes, just out. And yeah, possibly as a mystery. Not out of play, but it is out of the house. Possibly as a mystery bonus stone, Craig's stone could be hanging out there on the edge of the 12. That could be all the difference in the end. Could be, you know, he almost got a nice bonus rolling over the top on that red. He uh, just a slight difference on the roll, and it's a double. Yeah. Or at least a freeze or something to outcount it. Exactly. Instead, what we have is the and mystery that biter. Is, yep, that's correct. The, 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 center, the center of the sheet is open, which is really all Andy Ingles, all Andy Ingles is looking for. Um, okay, there's gloves being thrown. There's skips coming up to sweep. There's, there's chaos on sheet A on the stone. He's trying like heck to get it past this hog line, and it's not going to get there. Good two and a half feet short. That is unfortunate. Poor timing for that. And what's Andy going to do? Is Andy going to try to take out some more stuff? Nope, he's, gonna, he's, he's, he's coming in. He's coming in. Andy Ingalls. Coming in, trying to get behind the guard, just here to the uh, my right of the center line. As you see it on the camera, your left. Judy Recusen's first stone, They're putting some room on it, which is odd because it seems way outside the line. It's gonna get to the house, but it's not shot. Not shot. Full 12 needs to be a little bit better to be shot, but on the other hand, it could be promoted later. Just yeah, tap and up, it is right like in the that. middle, sort of messing with anyone else being able to get to the forefoot. Exactly. So that's not. I mean, it can be drawn around, but it does cut down some of the lines. Yeah. Leslie Gray's second vice stone. So she was being asked to throw up a guard, and she's got one. She's guarding that second center line. That's going to make that tap promote we were discussing a little bit harder. Actually, a lot harder. Yeah, you, um, can, you can maybe come from the left side and just give it a little tap to touch the red, but yeah. 
Yeah, they're going to peel. I don't Andy's think peeling. That no, that's, that's absolutely the correct call at this point. Peel some stuff out. Can't really go wrong with the peel. Nope. He's, he is exactly correct. He just has to make sure he has a shot with the hammer. Coming on the normal. It's coming down the right side of the center line. Needs to just just cross over to get the pe to get the chip. I think it's got it. Yeah, yeah, it's got it. And actually, it might even get two of them. Oh, it doesn't actually get the first one out because it did it, it wrecks. Jammed, right. It jammed, but it does. A stone went away. Right. And the so center line is clearer. Yeah. And center line is open. Yeah. That's the important part. So now we're going on to. Yes, we are now on to skip stones. We're now on to Dave Schmel's first skips stone. Where is the skip? I can't find him in any. Okay, there he is in the middle of the he's, 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 he's walking towards the hack. Yeah. I, I couldn't find him on any of the cameras at first. And yeah. they're looking. Where are they looking? Looking to put the guard back? With that ice, I think they're looking to put the guard back. Which is not necessarily a bad choice. Actually, Let's it's a very good ice. choice. Yeah, that does. That is sort of back to center line sort of weight or line. Oh, and then they moved the other, moved to the other side. I think it's still a guard, though. It's still putting the guard back. Certainly not hit that yellow out of play. Weight. No, yeah, certainly not a hit. It might be draw past it, but. I don't know. I don't, it's actually not enough ice for that. Well, unless he came to the inside. Okay. See what you're saying. It seems like it's back to center line, kind of. It line, looks like, yeah, it looks like it's a guard back to the center line. It's got some weight, but it's slowing down. It's slowing down. They're sw sweeping behind it. Ha ha ha. That never works. And it actually is going Ooh. to set. Interesting. So it covers the yellow, but it's close. So that if you wanted to tap the Tap yeah. it back, you're still not really prevented from doing so. Yeah, tap options are still very much in play. They're not easy, but they're still in play. So, who knows? Hard to say. We are getting down to it here, though. Three stones remaining in this game. Andy Ingalls taking a look. I mean, he very like he like he was saying. All he really needs to do is make sure that he's got a line to throw his draw. And his front end is pointing out that the other side would probably <laughs> just plug back up again. Yeah, and if they put it and if they put it higher, yeah, his shot's gone. So I think trying the tap back now might be the call. Because if he peels, if he peels and they put it in the same spot, then he's still got the tap. But if he peels and they put it higher, then it's a problem. He doesn't. He might not have the shot. But if he tries the tap, and whether he gets there or not, he doesn't have a final. He doesn't have a shot with the hammer. Very true. So, looks like he's called. Looks like he's called a draw in line. That's what it looks like to me. He's called a draw in line. <laughs> Andy Ingalls, presented for Comic Crime Club. His first skip stone. He's looking to draw. He wants this to be shot. Sweepers are close, but not on it yet. Lightly sweeping, but I think that's just a clean. Now they're sweeping for effect. Yes, yes. Definitely sweeping for effect now. He's in the pocket. He's past the guards. Does he have the depth to make this into shot? He's going to rub off his, and that's going to make him come up just short. Oh. He now has the second shot and the third shot, and those are fine and lovely things, except when you need to take one and the other team's got first shot. So... 
Dave Schmel taking a look. Wisely saying, you know what? I like my situation. I'm guarding up because guards. Guarding the promote, making it harder, although there are actually two promotes. So, and there's actually, even if even if you guard the promotes, there's actually a draw line. There's a couple, so he, he, can't, he can't block all of the options. There are basically three options that Andy could play. Dave's choosing which one to block up. He's trying to block off the simple tap. Can't blame him for that. There is a draw line if Andy sees it. He can draw in and actually use that red. Okay. Dave Stone is on the way. The sweepers wanted to touch it. The, ho the skip called him off. Two, three guard. That's actually, it's a perfect guard. That actually does the job very well. So now we're getting down to what will be the last stone of the game. Andy's calling for a tap raise. Don't know that I would do that. I actually, I actually would come in and curl in through the port in the middle, coming towards. I think, I think, I think there's a draw line he's not seeing. But he's going to play the raise. He's going to play the raise. It's questionable. Sh questionable. It only needs to raise it to full eight. Not even full eight. Half is probably enough, but yeah. Not what I would have done. I would have drawn through the port. I liked it when the two yellows weren't next to each other. I liked that this the tiny little run back was right there. Now with the pile kind of encroaching on your line here, it's yeah, it's not the easiest shot. I mean, once you get there, you've got it, but getting there is straight And forward. technically, they did not make it to Sunday morning curling. It's still 11.59. Let's find out for who the clock strikes midnight and the Cinderella story is over. The stone's coming down. Yes, I'm carrying the metaphor entirely too far. The sweepers are on it hard. It's coming. They've got the first hit. They've got the first tap. It ta oh, it doesn't tap anything? It tapped the red. Did it? It ticked the red and went sideways. Okay, I'll take your word for it. Um, and it doesn't get through, which means that never blame the Iceman. Dave Schmel takes the one just before the clock strikes midnight. And Michelle Schaefer, Ian Schaefer, Leslie Gray, and Dave Schmel will be in the B event finals against Jimmy Fallon's team from Potomac at noon tomorrow. And we say thank you very much for the Ingalls team from Potomac. Stacey Tetsko, Craig Marquardt, Judy Rakusen, and Andy Inglis. So, Inglis, Inglis, rather. So, that's it for the curling. It's midnight. It's time for me to go home. Have a great night, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow morning for, one, for uh, C and D semis and then all of the finals at noon. Bye-bye now. Thank you.